There's a football love affair in Lubbock, and the leading man has an arm that is golden. Texas Tech's B.J. Simmons has lit up the record books with scorching performances this young season. In the past two games alone, he has thrown for over 1,200 yards. He is the top offensive weapon in the nation. Add to that mix, the Aggies of A&M are coming to town. The folks settle in for a Saturday night special. The Aggies haven't tasted victory against the Red Raiders for three years, but the new-look Aggies are determined to end the drought. Texas A&M takes on B.J. Simmons and the nation's leading offense. Next on Fox Sports Net. From the campus of from Texas the campus Tech of Texas University Texas in Lubbock, University Kiosera presents, Kiosera college, presents football college Football Saturday. Saturday. Today, the Texas a and Aggies visit the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Rowdy Lubbock, Texas. Bill Land, along with Gary Reasons, glad to have you aboard for this Saturday night special. What a rivalry here. It dates back to 1927. Most recently, it has been very intense, with Texas Tech winning six of the last eight. Wild finishes have been certainly the course of the day, and these two teams just really don't like each other. Now, when you get to Tech, you got to talk about passing, and you talk about their new quarterback, B.J. Simmons. He's not only known in the South Plains of Texas, Gary, he's become a national name. Well, this young man has come on the field very well this year for the for the Red Raiders. Just to, He's a senior quarterback, but only started four games, Bill, but he's put up some Star, -like, star Wars-like numbers. Just a tremendous output for him offensively throwing the football. This young man leads the total offense in the nation per game, and I tell you, 160 yards better than the next competitor offensively in, in 1A football. I tell you, that's tremendous for that offense, and I tell you, as he goes, the, uh, the offense goes for the Red Raiders of the A&M defense has a big task. Yeah, they certainly right realize they're going to give up some points tonight. But certainly the Aggies know they're going to have to put some points on the board as well. They've got a couple of trigger men that can get it done, whether it's Reggie McNeil or Dustin Long. Well, two very capable quarterbacks, but I think that Reggie McNeil gives him the best chance to win. The young man has 4-4 four, four speed in the 40, throws the ball exceptionally, exceptionally well, and Dustin Long, don't count him out. If he has to play, he's a capable quarterback also. Seven touchdowns a year ago, Bill, in this contest against uh, Texas Tech. All right, certainly no enthusiasm lacking here tonight. Throw in the late night start here in Lubbock. It should be a wild one. We come back on Kyocera College Football Saturday. Jim Knox with more about the record setting DJ Simmons. Welcome back. College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera on Fox Sports Net. Bill and Gary Reasons with you up top here at Jones SBC Stadium. And the Aggies and the Red Raiders. Heck, 3-1, A&M 2-2. Let's go down now to Jim Knox. Okay, thank you very much, Bill. And here they are right over my right shoulder, the Red Raiders. They are pumped and ready to go. And, guys, we're in for a wild one because about an hour ago, I talked to B.J. Simmons, the Red Raider quarterback, and believe this, he thinks this offense can get better. Hard to beat last week's performance against Ole Miss. The headlines and all the flavors talking about that record-setting day. And B.J. Simmons was on fire. He threw everywhere. Everybody got in the mix. Three receivers over the 100-yard mark. At the end of the game, B.J. Simmons ended up with seven total touchdowns, six through the air, one on offense. He ran it in. Up next, Texas Tech against Texas A&M. Will the Aggie defense be up for the challenge? We will find out next. Coming up on College Football Saturday on Kia Sane. Welcome back to a rockin' and rollin' Jones SBC Stadium in Lubbock, Texas. Texas A&M and Texas Tech, the Big 12 opener on College Football Saturday, presented by Kiyosera. And Coach Dennis Franchone worried about his ball club and how they'll handle things here tonight. I think winning a shootout will be hard for us. Um, you know, we're, we're not a team that has scored uh, at that rate, uh, but we have to be able to do whatever was, needs to be done to put ourselves in a position to win. I just don't think that's the formula that plays best for us. Dennis Franchoni knows that, Gary, 
if you get into all offense with this Red Raider club, that's their game. It's tough. I tell you, Dennis's team is putting up 24 and a half points a game, Bill. But the Red Raiders, outstanding, 42 and a half points on this season alone. And they're throwing up some numbers that are just out of this world. Texas Tech coming off a victory at Ole Miss, 49-45. Simmons, the record-setting 661 yards passing. A&M, back-to-back losses to Pittsburgh, 37-26 last week in College Station, and at Virginia Tech, 35-19 back in Virginia. Their two victories were Utah and Arkansas State. Glad to welcome the rest of our national audience that has joined us here in Lubbock, Texas for Big 12 football. Mike Leach and the Red Raiders of Texas Tech to face Texas A&M. It is A&M at two and two, Texas Tech three and one. I'm Bill Land along with Gary Reasons and Jim Knox. And this is an intense rivalry that goes back to 1927. The two schools frankly just don't care a whole lot for one another. And Texas Tech has had the upper hand recently, including winning the last two, six of the last eight, and a wild overtime affair last year in College Station. The Aggies will kick it off here with Cody Skates from Tyler, Texas, and Texas Tech back on the receiving end as they come in with the nation's best offense, 571 yards per contest. Two yards deep in the end zone, out to the 10, the 15, the 20, 25, 30, and a flag is thrown on the play as the Red Raiders bring it out. Great run back that time by Johnny Mack. We'll see what the flag is. 34 yards on the return by Mack. Both these teams have excellent return games. It'll be against Texas Tech on the hole. Holding on the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and it's a first down. Let's take a look at the Kyocera starting lineups. First of all, the quarterback, B.J. Simmons. He's already put a dent in Cliff Kingsbury's record book, thrown for 1,247 yards the, first two, the last two weeks. That is more than all but one Big 12 team for this season. Well, he's already got 16 touchdowns on the season. That's a big number for a college quarterback after just four games. Henderson is the lone back in the backfield with Simmons. The four wideouts, you'll notice wide splits from the offensive line. Welker on the reception. Breaks the tackle to the 15, the 20, and Welker a first down for Texas Tech as they operated first to 10 from their 11. Singleton made the tackle. Our Kiyosera starting lineups for Tech. We'll take a look at the offensive line. Senior center Toby Cecil leads a talented group that averages 305 pounds per man. They, of course, excel at pass protection. The backs and receivers, Welker, Peters, and Francis combined for 74 receptions and 1,071 yards so far this season. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Francis on the end around. Aggies stretch it out defensively. Let's take a look at the Kyocera Aggie defense now. Defensive coordinator Carl Torbus says they've not earned that wrecking crew title just yet. The line, led by soft Johnny Jolly, he's their leading tackler up front. Linebacker depth, a big blow with Jared Morris out for the year. They're young there. And the secondary, big hitter, 19, Jackson Appel. Second and seven, the ball at the 31 for Texas Tech. Simmons changes many plays, reacts to what the defense sets up in. Henderson, first through the 45-yard line. Henderson like a bowl of lightning, gives another first down to this Texas Tech powerful offense. Well, that offense is going well, and Texas A&M defensively this year, Bill, went from a 3-4 alignment to a 4-3, so that means they've got four defensive linemen in there, and you talked about B.J. Simmons at the line of scrimmage and what he does. He calls out a lot of plays. Everything is checked with me at the line of scrimmage. The quarterback runs the entire show, and he puts them in the best play possible. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Pickup of seven, uh, they're uh, 14 on that last play. 
Simmons, plenty of time, man wide open. And it is complete across to the 33 yard line. And Peters with the reception. Mickey is a senior from Weatherford, Texas. Appel made the tackle. You think you could probably blitz his quarterback, but it's really not easy to do. B.J. Simmons has a lot of time because his offensive line gives him the time to throw. You see, there's no one in his space, and B.J. just steps up comfortably to throw that football. And when he has time to do that, he's going to find his receivers, and he finds Peters here in a nice crossing route. Peters averaging 14 yards per reception and a first and 10 for Simmons. Dances away from one defender. Downs the football, and a flag is thrown. There you see some of the intensity between these two teams. Well, that's the referee right behind B.J. Simmons on the sideline, and he throws the flag, runs with him, but with him. when he's running to the sideline, the referee is running right behind him and probably going to get a grounding penalty here. It's exactly what the referee is calling. Well, he's outside the tackle box here, but he's not making an effort to throw it at any, any one of the receivers. B.J. Simmons... Hear the referee explain Intentional it. grounding on the offense. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. It's second down. I believe it was Singleton. Well, Watch Singleton, number six, who was chasing him there. Well, you see B.J. Simmons outside. He's not really making an effort. There's no receivers in the area. You see here, and watch him throw the football down to the ground. And that's what he's called for, just intentional grounding to avoid the tackle and the sack. Second and 16, the ball from the 37. The screen, Henderson got a nice block, 30, 25 yard line and out of bounds. Now they keep the clock running as he was tackled in play. Well, Torian Henderson, this is the tailback in this offense, and he's kind of a forgotten guy, Bill. He's not asked to run the football a great deal, but the screen play, which is what you see here with Texas Tech, this is something they run to perfection, and Torian Henderson shows he's got enough speed to get to the sideline and make a nice play here for the Red Raiders. Henderson, 22 carries coming in, 101 yards, 18 receptions. So, regardless of how they get it to him, he's a big playmaker. Simmons is three of four. It is third and three from the 25 for the Red Raiders. Opening possession for Texas Tech. Simmons, quick hitter, Peters, got the first down inside the 12-yard line as Peters brought down on the play by McDaniel and Jackson Appel. Look at what the Texas A&M defense has to look at all night. It's the wide lines. Look at the length of the size here between these offensive linemen. B.J. Simmons hits wide to wide. There's no angles to come at the quarterback. He's able to step up and throw comfortably. Carl Torbush has to find a way to put some pressure on that quarterback. It's going to be a pitch and catch all night. First and 10 at the 17. Simmons. In the end zone. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Texas Tech strikes first as Nehemiah Glover with the TD's third of the year. Well, when you've got receivers that can run the field like Nehemiah Glover, one of the fastest players on this Texas Tech offense, it makes it nice and easy for your quarterback just to wait, find the time to throw the football, and that's what he has here. It finds Glover on a nice crossing route along the back line of the end zone. On for the point after. <laughs> Too good with the kick, and it is good. And Texas Tech. A 7-0 lead, 12 29 to go, first quarter on Kyocero Valley Football Saturday. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier. By Dr. Pepper, BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. By Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. By the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. And today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. Surf the web up to five times faster. That's Will Rogers riding into the sunset on the Tech campus. The rear end of the horse is directly facing towards College Station, the home of the Aggies. <laughs> they made sure of that when they put that statue up here many years ago. Just add a little bit to the rivalry. Texas A&M takes the kickoff. The 10 and then slipping and falling. On the return for the Aggies, Jamar Taylor 
6'2", 197, a senior. And Texas A&M will have it at their own 14-yard line for a first and 10 situation. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox with you here in Lubbock. The Big 12 opener for these two ball clubs after a five-yard return. Simmons, wow, five of six, 78 yards passing on that 87-yard drive. Let's take a look at our Kyocera offense for Texas A&M. The quarterback coming on, Reggie McNeil. Dual threat, runner pass, he proved it in pressure last year against Oklahoma. Four touchdown passes to knock off the number one ranked Sooners and also threw for, or rather ran for 89 yards. They keep it on the ground here on the opening push for Texas A&M and our Kyocera offensive line for Texas A&M. Anchored by the senior leader, Alan Rubert. The other side, the youth shows with redshirt freshman Kotzer. The backs and receivers will watch the juniors. Terrence Murphy, explosive run or receiving. And Derek Farmer led the team in the rushing the last two years. He doesn't get it going. We'll see redshirt freshman Courtney Lewis, who's been very exciting in the first four games this year. Second and 13, the ball on the 11 with a loss on that last play. McNeil, play action. And the ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at the Texas Tech defense. Brought to you by Kiyosera. Extremely young and a lot to learn. Beachman, Hudler, Scott, all red shirt freshmen. They'll be seeing action tonight. The linebackers, Brock Stratton, another freshman. He is their leading tackler on the ball club. And the DBs and the secondary, Ryan Aycock, had a key interception to help sew up the win against Ole Miss last week. He's also a big hitter. Well, you talk about the Tech defense. In this defense, 10 freshmen and four sophomores in there too deep, so they are a very young squad. Third down, 13 to go. And out of the backfield. At the 10, and not much more, Lewis comes in and gets rocked hard on the play. John Saldy there, the sophomore out of South Lake, Texas, comes up to stuff it. Well, when you're a young defense, you're going to play with a lot of enthusiasm. Here in front of this crowd, a late ball game. This is what you want to do defensively, fly to it. Courtney Lewis showing his skills out of the backfield, catching the football with the Red Raider defense and Saldy making the play. Back to receive the punt return. The dangerous Wes Welker escapes, averaging 39.9 in the kicking game this year. Gets it away. Welker. At the 46, breaks a tackle, the 50. Slips by two more, Welker still on his feet, and Welker finally knocked out of bounds near the 40, making the 37-yard line. Excellent field position for Texas Tech. On the second possession of the night. I think field position is gonna be key in this football game. It's gonna happen in the special teams area. Watch a Kyocera's presentation of College Football Saturday. More coming up from Lubbock in a moment. College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera. Texas Tech 7-0, second possession. Here's what happened on the first 17-yard TD pass to Glover. Well, B.J. Simmons has time back there. He's just going to go across the back of the end, end line, find Nehemiah Glover, comes all the way across the field, does a nice job of finding the receiver. When you have time to throw the football like B.J. Simmons has here, it's a dangerous combination here for this uh, Red Raider offense. Texas Tech, first and 10 from the 37 of AM. Okay, you're ready on a whistle. Clock's running. Simmons, three wide outs to the top of your screen, one to the left, and Henderson in the backfield with it. Little shuttle pass, Henderson. Down to about the 31-yard line. For a Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to Mike Goldberg. Bill, as promised by Bob Stoops, number one Oklahoma, not looking ahead. This is the Sooners' Mark Bradley. A 100-yard kickoff return. Oklahoma rolls it up on Iowa State. And don't forget, next week, the Red River Shootout. Oklahoma is at Texas. Boy. Is that Oklahoma kick return game something? <laughs> Pick your poison. Anybody back there could take it back. They found that out. Bruins a winner today, though, over Washington, a game you saw here on Fox Sports Net. Second and three, ball on the 30-yard line. Simmons. Trying to go to Glover again. 
Let's go down to Jim Knox on the sideline. All right, a little problem with Jim's mic. We'll get it back to him. Jack can't imagine ever having a problem in here being heard. <laughs> what a crowd, and are they gassed up here tonight with Texas Tech. Third down here for the Red Raiders. 48% completion percentage on third down this season for Texas Tech. It's an outstanding number. Let's see how B.J. does here on this play. Welker and Glover go wide left. Welker. And Welker's got the first down as he stretches it to the 22-yard line. Brian Singleton, sophomore from Galveston, out of Ball High School, made the tackle for the Ags. You wonder why this football team doesn't like to run the ball, but Mike Leach tells us it's all about production. As long as you move the chains, which B.J. Simmons does a nice job of completing it to a myriad of receivers throughout this football team he's happy to have that kind of production then he's able to throw the big ball also down the field for the big play and welker with that reception continues to set records out here at texas tech this guy is a guy that was not highly recruited at all and is setting all kinds of mark all-purpose standout wes welker first to ten ball on the 21 and henderson with a rare ground game Welker with that last reception. Passing Lloyd Hill, who was a superstar out here. And Welker with 190 receptions now at the top of the list, Texas Tech career-wise. Francis and Peters, you see, with this team, four and five. And also all-purpose yards. This young man does a great job in the return game here for, for Texas Tech. And, and he's gonna have the football in his hands a lot tonight. Second and eight ball on the 19-yard line. Francis to the top of your screen. Simmons under pressure this time. Incomplete just off the fingertips of Welker. Like to welcome Fox Sports New England as you join us here in, in Lubbock, Texas with Texas A&M. Trailing Texas Tech, it is seven to nothing. Texas Tech with the ball in its second possession after an opening TD pass from Simmons to Glover of 17 yards on the first possession. Bill Land, Gary Reasons up top. Jim Knox on the sidelines here tonight on Fox Sports Net. College Football Saturday presented by Kiyosera. Red Raiders moving again. Face a third and eight though at the 19 of Texas A&M. Simmons, nation's leading passer. Completes it. Glover. Five. Glover. Touchdown, Red Raiders. Glover gets his second TD of the night. This time a 19-yarder. Texas Tech showing you the offensive explosion that we anticipated. They averaged 42 points, a contest second in the Big 12, fourth in the nation. And the point after is good by two good. Six plays, 33 yards, a minute 44. Glover caps it off on Kiyosara College Football Saturday. <laughs> Texas Tech 14, Texas A&M nothing on Kiyosara College Football Saturday from the Big 12. Fantasy football players, listen up. A show for you with 30 minutes of who to suit up, who to sit, who's the player you need to pick up. Our experts do the work to help you look like a genius. The ultimate fantasy football show tonight after college football. Tomorrow morning also, only on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings for the start times in your area. Texas Tech to kick it off here with Keith Tugood. He is a redshirt freshman, 6'2", 190. And deep, number five is Terrence Murphy. Jamar Taylor also back there. Taylor brings it out, 10, 15. Stumbles into a Red Raider about the 22-yard line where they'll operate first and 10. Let's go back to the Red Raider last score. Nice play design here by Mike Leach. It's going to be a wide receiver middle screen. The block's going to come inside here. Pretty unique. You never see this very much in college football. You see Nehemiah Glover, Glover number six, come to the middle of the field on the screen block in front of him. And then it's just a fun dive into the end zone. 
Nissan scoring drive. Well, it didn't take them long. Six plays, 144. Simmons to Glover. Second time they've hooked up tonight. Tech, 132 yards of offense. AM minus two as the Aggies get their second possession. Flags thrown everywhere. A dead ball foul, a false start on the offense. Boy, Five not what the Aggies needed, Gary. Aggies shoot themselves in the foot a little bit here. First and 15, ball on the 17-yard line for Texas A&M. McNeil hands it off. Lewis tripped up near the line of scrimmage. Let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill, after that touchdown toss, B.J. Simmons went up to Nehemiah Glover and said they cannot stop us. B.J. Simmons, keep in mind, he's very effective when he spreads the ball around. Last week, three receivers over 100 yards. A lot of intensity on this pitch here at Texas Tech. On the other side, Aggies have to match the intensity, guys. Simmons tonight. We got 8.21 to go first quarter. That's why he says he's not cocky. He's very confident. A lot of swagger to him that, hey, I can do better than what I've been doing the last two weeks. Lewis runs out of room as he takes the pitch and goes out of bounds near the 20-yard line. I think the intensity is right. I think that Jim Knox said it right, said it best. When Texas A&M has to match that intensity, hey, this crowd is into this football game. It's a lively atmosphere. 9 p.m. start. Texas Tech has come out firing, and that's what they do best. And their defense bills are playing very well defensively. A young defense here at Texas Tech. They're flying to the football. They've shut down the run primarily. So now A&M has to find a way to move the football and get some yardage and get some confidence on that sideline. Yeah, Dennis Franchoni looks on. The Tech defense has been allowing 33 points a game. But not so far here. McNeil scrambles, he does it well, and completes it across the 45 and out to the 50-yard line. Murphy on the reception. Terrence the junior out of Tyler, Texas, brought down by Marcus Boyd, a senior from here in Lubbock. Well, that's the intangibles that a Reggie McNeil brings to the table at the quarterback position. Able to step up, he's got traffic in the backfield, but he steps up nicely and waits for Murphy to come across the field and delivers a strike. And now, more importantly, gets into Red Raider territory for the first time. 33 yards on the pickup. First and 10 at the 48, and Murphy is a guy that can explode, averaging 14.6 per reception. First and 10 at the 48, little breathing room now for the Aggies. McNeil on the keeper, 45, 40, and McNeil's close to another first down as Reggie McNeil scampers. Let's take a look at the keys to the game for Texas A&M. Well, a few key things that Texas A&M has to do to win this game. Balancing out, they run the ball, throw the ball, that play-action game, and defensively, no yak. That means no yards after the catch. And then field position in the kicking game, I think, is key for this football team. They need to win that here if they have a chance. I'll tell you, Texas Tech has started out very fast in this game, and as we talked about earlier, we need to see Texas A&M match that intensity. McNeil, a scamper of 17, sets up Texas A&M, first and 10 at the 36 of Texas Tech. 7.35 to go here, first quarter. Aggies trailing 14 zip. McNeil, good protection, finds a man, and it is complete at the 25 yard line. Should be a first down. Comcast of Philadelphia, welcome aboard. Fox Sports Net bringing you College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sara from Lubbock, Texas. Bill and Gary Reasons and Jim Knox with you as Texas Tech has jumped to a 14-0 lead over rival Texas A&M in the Big 12 opener for both clubs. McNeil of the Aggies got him on a drive right now, though. First and 10 at the 25 of Tech. He flips on the pitch and sliding and falling on the play for not much at all was Derek Farmer. Farmer, a junior from Tyler out of Lee in Tyler, Texas, and he has been averaging just 2.9 per carry. Adele Duckett does a nice job of the defensive end position. Just a junior here, he's what they like out there at the defensive end spot. Able to play up the field, does a nice job sideline to sideline also. Gives them the speed rush they need and also doing a good job on the outside run game. He needs to be one of the leaders up front for Texas Tech defensively. They're asking him to fill that bill here for this young defense. Defense. Second and eight, the ball from the 23. McNeil going for six, just overreaching for Taylor. 
Yeah, a little bumping and pushing going on down there in the end zone. Reggie McNeil trying to get a strike to Taylor. Good coverage in the secondary. The Aggies, 360 yards of total offense. They've been getting 189 through the air, 170 on the ground. I think I like this, the way the referees are allowing them to bump a little bit. Both guys are looking back. Watch them. They're both looking for the football. A little jostling there. There's not really any major contact. And I think that's a good non-call, but the ball is overthrown, obviously. Third and eight at the 23. And a timeout is called by Texas Tech. So the Red Raiders will take a break here with A&M threatening for the first time. You're looking at first year head coach Dennis Franchoni. His resume is incredible. After a couple years at Alabama, he won 10 there in his last year, three years at TCU, he's at New Mexico. He has been a builder and had great success at every stop. Really feels at home back in Texas now at A&M. He's had a lot of stops here in the state of Texas and I tell you coming out here, he's actually played in this stadium but really wasn't the coach. He was the coach of New Mexico when he played here last. And didn't win that football game when they came out here. So he understands the atmosphere that's out here. I'm not sure he understands the rivalry yet between these two teams. He's learning as he goes in that capacity as the head coach of this football team. But now he's trying to get his troops, you know, squared away. Nice job here offensively for Texas A&M, moving the ball into the territory down here for Texas Tech and trying to put something up on the board. Reggie McNeil, I think he's kind of found his stride, Bill. I think to be very honest, the coaches and the players of these schools have great respect for one another. The fans, the Tech fans in general, I think feel slighted by Texas and by Texas A&M. As a result, these Tech fans come here tonight with an attitude. Uh, Tech, <laughs> it was tough to get here. We, we couldn't get flights to this town because there were so many fans coming to support this Red Raider football team. And last year, Tech beat both of those rivals and went 9-5 and five and whipped up on Clemson in the Tangerine Bowl. McNeil scrambling on the third and eight. Fires complete. Touchdown AM. Oh, what a pass and what a catch in the end zone by Thomas. Under pressure, McNeil rifled it to Thomas. Reggie McNeil shows the scramble ability and the speed that he has at the quarterback spot. There and is a, pen a penalty. Yeah, there's a penalty. But, but look at McNeil, how he avoids the defense here. You got Duckett trying to track him down, but watch the strike that he throws. Takes a little shot there. and Coming back, Gary. Good job that time by Terrence Thomas. Still working, trying to get that score, and that's a nice throw, but it's going to come back. Pass on the offense. The passer was beyond the, the line of scrimmage. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's third down. Wow, that's got to be awful close. He rolled out pretty nicely, I thought. I didn't know that he got close to the line of scrimmage. You're going to take a look here. The original line of scrimmage is about the 28-yard line. And let's see where Reggie McNeil goes when he releases the football. It's going to be about the 23-yard. Actually, he's past that. The, the first down line, uh, the start line is the 23, and he steps just across it. Yeah, it was close, and the penalty goes against a and Wow, that's a tough call. Looked like it was a good play, but... And the Aggies will call a timeout here as Murphy gets a word from Coach Franchoni. Well, let's go back. This series has got so many great finishes. AM had a big year in 67. Here in Lubbock that year, with Tech leading by three, Aggie quarterback Ed Hargett scrambles for a touchdown on the final play of the game. And the Aggies won 28-24. They won seven in a row. They earned their first Southwest Conference title since 56. A lot of close football games in this rivalry, Bill. No doubt about that. Last year certainly may have topped him with the 48-47 Aggie loss at home to Tech in overtime. Just an incredible finish that tonight's backup quarter for quarterback for AM Dustin Long through seven touchdown passes. And lost. That's what's amazing. Series history to update you. Aggies lead 33-27-1. Tech, we mentioned six of the last eight, including the last four here in Lubbock. And there's that last note about the overtime thriller last year. While we got a moment, let's head back down on the sidelines to Jim Knox. All right, Phil, just a moment ago, Dennis Franchione, A&M head coach, was not pleased about that call. He called over the referees, and he gave them an earful. Coach Fran not happy about that. Nevertheless, Aggies right now facing third and long. Yeah, third and 12 now, ball at the 27-yard line. Or fourth down, it should be, yes. The scoreboard is indicating third, but it is fourth down, so... They'll come on for the field goal attempt. Down. It is fourth down. 
Texas A&M was not charged with a timeout. All right, they explained that process. Todd Pegram, sophomore from Plano, Texas, out of Plano West. He is eight of nine in field goals this year. His longest is a 52. This is a 44-yarder. think got tipped and it is way short as Pegram now eight of ten so nothing going right for EM even when they finally moved the football thought they'd scored a touchdown it came back on the penalty and then they do not convert on the field goal attempt well Dustin Long the backup quarterback is the holder on that play bill and actually what he does is he drops the snap the ball comes into his hands and he puts it down onto the ball on the ground late. And Dustin Long couldn't get it up and take her. Take a look here at the delivery and watch Dustin Long, who's the holder. He's going to miss this ball. The ball was right there on target, but Dustin Long mishandles it. Goes between his legs. He's lucky to get it down at all. And Pegram not able to kind of breaks his rhythm and he just kind of scuds it right under the bottom of it and pushes it out to the right. Boy, great camera work and just not able to get everything into it. When that kicker's used to his rhythm, it was a heck of a job by Long to regather it, but they don't get the field goal, and Tech takes over. First and 10 on the 27 of Texas Tech. Simmons splits that defense with a completion near the 44, but a flag is thrown on Peters making the reception. You see which way this one goes. Going to have offensive pass interference here pushing off. The field judge throws that penalty down the field. And that'll help you get open if you push off a little bit in the secondary, and the secondary can't touch the receiver, that's for sure. Spoken like a former defender. Texas Tech has been averaging seven and a half penalties for nearly 80 yards a game. That's something they like to cut down. There was pass interference on the offense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal, and it's still first down. Well, the field judge is back here. He's the one that's going to call the penalty. You're going to take a look here as... B.J. Simmons throws the football out there. Take a look at the middle of the field, maybe on the hash. That's not that's not contact there, but maybe it was outside receiver that's out of our screen that's pushing off, and well, I'm not sure I see where that happens. The field judge threw the flag, and uh, nonetheless, the Red Raiders are backed up. First to 24 from the 13 of Texas Tech. This is their third possession. They got touchdown passes from Simmons to Glover on each of their first two. Simmons. Saw something he didn't like and calls a timeout. We'll take a break as well. Kiyosera's presentation of college football Saturday. It's Tech 14, Texas A&M 0. Welcome back, Texas Tech 14, A&M 0. Bill and Gary Reese and Jim Knox with you. This week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. First, Mike Holmgren returns to Green Bay for the first time as he leads the undefeated Seahawks against the Packers team looking to get back on track. Then the Redskins try to stay hot when they take on an Eagles team trying to get back among the NFC's elite or other regional action coming your direction. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. The biggest stories in the NFC, and the NFC is on Fox. Late night done right. I'll tell you what, Texas Tech is doing it right right now. As, let's see what they come up with on a first and 24. Ball on the 13. Henderson in the backfield with Simmons. He completes it across the middle and Peters down across the 30, 32 yard line. And let's take a look at our Microsoft leaderboard to give you an idea of the records that are going on around here. Single game passing yards all time. David Klingler of Houston. He did that the week after Matt Vogler of TCU set the record against Klingler's Houston team. Simmons is third all time. Those are big numbers, Bill. Oh. <laughs> I'd like you to stats person on those games. Oh, what? Thank goodness we got computers these days. Second and five, ball on the 32. Henderson spins across the 40, 45. 
and move those chains again down in distance. Gary almost doesn't mean anything to this Tech team. Well, Carl Tarbush, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M, is choosing to go with a three-man line and rushing only three players towards the quarterback. You see here the three down line are going to rush one, two, three, and that's the only pressure that B.J. Simmons sees. But this is a nice play call. Little middle screen here to his tailback, Torian Henderson. Just take care of those three and then block the next level, which is what they do nicely. And Torian Henderson shows he's got pretty good footwork as well. 16 yards on this pickup. The sophomore out of Gatesville, Texas, not far from Waco, makes it a first and 10 at the 48. Simmons completes another one and another first down as Texas Tech is having its way. Buell makes the tackle that time on the Texas Tech receiver. Well, one of the things that happened to Texas A&M last year in this football game is those their defensive secondary, they weren't able to match up with this receiving core from Texas Tech, and so far that's not happening as well tonight, Bill. Could be a little tired out there, and Mike Leach is gonna continue running this offense, and they're gonna run play after play after play. Joey Hawkins made the reception there. Glad right to welcome Fox Sports to Chicago to College Football Saturday. Presented by Kia Sara, Texas Tech with a 14-0 lead. Looking for more. First and 10 at the 42 for the Red Raiders. They are in Aggie territory again. And Simmons again calls a timeout. And you can see he is upset. Well, I think the offensive line is having a hard time getting their alignments called up there. The right guard and the center are calling that protection up there for them. And B.J. Simmons is not getting the coordination right there. Toby Cecil, the center, and E.J. Whitley, the right guard, they're the ones standing the protection up there, and it's not going easy for those guys right now. They have now used all of their timeouts. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper Heisman watch, and this is really going to be a great race this year, Gary, because I think it was wide open to start with, and new names are popping up. Well, Phillip Rivers from NC State, hard to argue. Fitzgerald, Aggie fans can tell you what the pit receiver did last week. And I think Simmons is legit after what he's done the last two weeks. No doubt about it, BJ, with what he's done. Also, Rashawn Woods, wide receiver for Oklahoma State, doing an excellent job catching football, one of the best receivers in the country. You know, there's a lot of talented players out there in the country. I think it's still a feeling out process. We just picked four or five of the top ones in the country and a couple out of the Big 12. I think there's still a number of players that are, that are still on the hunt for that. It's a long way from being over. Woods got everybody's attention this year with his record setting seven TD receptions against SMU. He was already returning All-American, but some folks weren't aware of it. He certainly put a notation on that one. First and 10 at the 42 now with the Red Raiders out of timeouts. And we still got 4.30 to go here in the first quarter. Anderson. Anderson to the 35-yard line. Maybe only 5'9", 179, but he's tougher than he appears. He picked up some hard yards there. Torian henderson got good foot footwork. Watch the offensive line here. They match up. It's going to be body, body, body. Come on off the ball here. This is a running play. Not very many of these in this offense. You see what they do? Do a good job there. You got a back block in there, and that's a good job, and Torian Henderson cuts inside of that. That's Clay McGuire, one of those backs back there, doing a nice job. Number 47 for the Red Raiders. Second and three, Welker in motion, and then Simmons drops a football. He quickly pounces on it. Kind of a rare thing for him. It's a just trying to do a ball fake, and the ball comes right out of his hand. Simmons, senior out of Houston, Cy Creek High School. He's coming back, just doing a ball fake and trying to hide it there behind his tail. And uh, sometimes uh, those things happen, but smartly, that does the right thing, not trying to pick it up and make a play. He just jumps right on top of it. Had some showers earlier here today, a little bit this afternoon. I don't know if the turf was a little wet, but it looked like he just mishandled that one. Third down and 15, ball on the 47 now for Texas Tech. Simmons got all day. Oh, my goodness. Francis, who was an exceptional receiver, their leader yardage-wise, and that one hit him, I think, right in the face mask. Yeah, just a three-man rush again by Texas A&M, dropping eight. But I tell you, this young man, Simmons, throws the ball and throws it well. Carlos Francis coming across. You're going to see him come down and go across inside the middle. Nobody there. He's going to throw it between the linebackers in the zone. Take a look at the ball. It's delivered right there. Bingo. He's got to make that catch. That was enough yardage for the first down. Yeah. Fourth down and 15, and Alan Reyes, the freshman punter from Allen, Texas, in the suburbs of Dallas, will come on to kick it. He stands at his own 38-yard line. Oh, did he 
he touch it? It is pounced on by Tech, I believe. Yes. I think Fuller came up with the football for Texas Tech. Cody Fuller. Almost if Carter, the return man, either didn't see it or lost sight of it for a moment, Gary. I think he relaxed. What he did, Bill, was he relaxed very easily. He stepped up one step. The ball came off his fingertip. Instead of making the sure catch, hitting underneath it, when you're a returner, watch him here. His hands just kind of go out and relax. He doesn't step up under the ball. He just step up under there, get his legs down, bend his knees, and then the Red Raiders just pounce on top of it with Fuller coming up with it. Texas Tech gets it right back. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. Francis to the right side. Simmons gives it to Francis. 15, 10, and out of bounds. Jolly forcing him out. Two forty-eight to go in the first quarter. Tech trying to make it a three-touchdown ball game. This is a machine, this offense. Today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. Five different receivers in the first quarter have caught the football from Simmons. Who will he pick here? Second and one, the ball at the nine. Oh, well, got a finger on it. Well covered, though, by Appel. Appel with 55 tackles to lead Texas A&M. Sophomore. A lot of friends with Texas. Not usually good if your safety is your leading tackler, but Appel, I think, is one of the better safeties in, in the Big 12. He does a nice job. He's a good tackler. Good coverage outside on Wes Welker. The ball is a little bit overthrown, but a heck of a catch, and I think he'd have been out of bounds if he had caught it. Well, Appel's a guy that defensive coordinator Carl Torbers really likes. He says he brings it every play, every game. Third and one, ball on the nine. Henderson got the first down as he slides to about the seven-yard line. Maybe inside of that. Well, things have happened so quickly. How about the tech keys to the game, Gary? Well, one of the big things they like to do is get out fast and strike early. That's certainly one of the things that they've done and done well tonight. And then I think their defense has to wake up. They haven't played well, particularly in the second half, and I think turnovers are a big key for this football team. If they keep clicking and they don't turn the ball over, they're hard to stop. So I think that's one of the things to look for. First and goal to go for the seven-yard line. Simmons under center. Welker in motion, fakes to him, gives to Henderson. Henderson pushes forward to the four-yard line. Second and goal coming up from the four for Texas Tech. Nice play by Johnny Jolly, the defensive tackle coming in the backfield. One of the bright spots here for Texas A&M defensively, number 97, doing a good job. Just a sophomore, but he's, you know, he's been the ringleader up there for the defensive front and answering the call there on that play. Texas Tech with 10 first downs to three for AM as we get inside the two minute mark of the first quarter. Second and goal from the four, back to the spread offense. Simmons. And it knocked down and nearly picked off by Jolly, I believe. Well, Jolly just kind of bumps in the offensive line, pops in and steps back a couple of steps. And EJ Simmons didn't account for him in the pass protection back there. Jolly, a sophomore out of Houston Forest Brook High School, and gets his fifth pass deflection this season. Came in with 35 tackles, the best among their down linemen. Third and goal from the four for the Red Raiders. And then consider a mild victory here if they could force the field goal to take. Not that Mike Leach would necessarily go for it. Simmons, incomplete. Ball was tipped again, Bill. Yeah, Tech wanted the flag, not going to get it. McDaniel got a touch on, I believe, Peters was the intended receiver. And again, it does a nice job, just tips it away, and looks like the field goal unit's going to trot out there. That means Keith too good, as he is one of two this year, has hit a 31-yarder. 21 touchdowns going out, 23 for Texas Tech on the season. Actually, 24 touchdowns. They've only had to attempt two field goals. That's how the offense has been so efficient. And this, a 21-yarder, is good. Texas Tech packs up three more. 17-nothing more coming up on Fox Sports Day.
Welcome back, College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Sarah. Big 12 tonight, Texas Tech 17, Texas A&M nothing. And the key play that led to that last score was the A&M muff punt. No, no doubt about it, the miscue here, whenever you do that in the kicking game, it can be a big play and a momentum swing. Texas Tech doing everything right here. Good job covering the punt and turn that into three points. Tech has scored on three of four in the latest Nissan scoring drive. Seven plays, 14 yards. It's stalled for a 22-yard officially. 22-yard field goal by Too Good. Too Good now boots it off. Taylor, a couple yards deep in the end zone to the 10. And Taylor brought down near the 16-yard line, making the stop for Texas Tech, 36, Antonio Huffman. Well, Texas A&M coming into this football game, they, they led college football. Their kick return team was number one in the nation in kick returns, and Texas Tech has really rose to the challenge on the kick coverage team, stopping them each time inside their own 20-yard line. That time a 16-yard return. There's the note, 33.18 average, and Murphy at 49. Well, they've been booting it away from him so far, using Taylor, but Taylor's been no slouch. Now, Reggie McNeil had a good-looking drive last time, thought he had a touchdown pass, had it taken away by being across the line of scrimmage. See what he does here, first attempt from the 17. Inside handoff, gets the ball out to the 20-yard line. Derek Farmer carrying the football. Yeah, that's the inside option play. A lot of teams in college football are running these days. They dive one inside, and the quarterback reads the near side defensive end, and if he stays the course looking for the quarterback, he hands it off inside, and Reggie McNeil does hand it off that time. But watch him calling that play again later in the football game and taking it down and going around the corner. He also has a pitch man on that play, so that could be a one-two combination. Patrice Rajondo Mwamba made the tackle that last time. Second and nine at the 20. McNeil comes out of the pocket. Underthrown intended for Lewis out near the 45-yard line. Well, he had a receiver that he wanted to throw to, but he's running to his left, and this quarterback, it's difficult with a right-handed quarterback to throw back across his body you know, about 25 yards down the field where he need to get the football to, and Dennis Franchoni can't be happy right now about his offense sputtering. You see Dustin Long there, the, the backup quarterback, signaling in the plays. Courtney Lewis coming off the field. Probably their biggest spark right now offensively when they run the football. So they're trying to get something settled down here find some things that are working for him. Aggies average 170 yards on the ground per game. Tonight, seven carries, 18 yards. Third and eight from the 20. McNeil will keep the football. 25, got some blockers. Turns it out to 30, 35. And near the 40-yard line, Reggie McNeil will move the chains for Texas A&M. And Jabari Smith made the stop. Now, why throw it down the field when you can run it down the field? Quarterback draw here all the way. You see the blocking inside. Good job that time of taking care of the middle linebacker. And Reggie McNeil shows the speed that he has get into the outside. And that's a big play for Texas A&M. 18 yards on the pickup. Yeah, one of the things they like to do is run the ball and then do play action pass. Not much play action because they haven't run the ball effectively in this game, Bill. 26 seconds to go in the first quarter. People dancing at the line. First and 10 from the 39. Farmer. Nice slashing move and then bulls his way to the midfield line. Well, the left side of the AM line did a good job that time. Number 73, Alan Ruber, the offensive tackle, the senior, the 6'6, 310 pounder, won the corner that time for Derek Farmer, getting a nice job and a good block out there. Byron Johnson made the tackle. Great watch, push by the Ags. Yeah, watch the left side of your line. They're doing a good job. You see Steamer, number 74, winning the corner also and helping on that play. And, Derek Farmer getting into the second and third level here of this Red Raider defense. So two seconds to go in the first quarter. 17-0, and that is it as they set the chains and restart the clock. Well, Texas Tech has come out running and gunning and leading it 17 to nothing. A couple of TD passes from Simmons to Glover, the highlights. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Tech 17, A&M 0. You're watching College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, presented by Kiyosera. Welcome back to Lubbock in College Football, presented by Kiyosera. Bill Landgary reasons with you. Texas Tech, the home team and the home fans, Loving it, 17-0. So far, everything they're doing is working offensively and pretty much defensively. 
I think they've done a good job offensively, especially B.J. Simmons, the quarterback. He is still clicking, Bill. What he does offensively, moving the football and throwing the ball, he's an exceptional quarterback. I think it's just finding the open receiver. Now Texas A&M has to find something that works for them, okay. get that offense clicking, and Reggie McNeil showing he's got the legs to make some plays here for this offense. He needs to start completing some passes. It'll be second down and eight coming up here for Texas A&M. Reggie McNeil getting the start tonight. Out of the shotgun here. He's got Farmer on one side, Lewis to his right. The option pitches to Courtney Lewis. Tech is there swarming to the ball. Really a nice job by Lewis to go forward to get something out of it. Let's take our Lincoln first quarter stats. And these two are dominated by Texas Tech. 167 yards passing offense, no doubt about it. Tech throwing the football very, very well. Total yards winning there. And everything's going their way. And four of six on third down. That's a pretty good percentage on the season. 48% here in this football game, 66%. So executing very well offensively, Texas Tech is. Raiders have a player down on the field right at the 50-yard line. And we're checking out, I think it's Mike Smith, 46, yes. Junior from Lubbock out of Coronado High School. 6'3", 245, plays the Sam linebacker spot. He also plays some defensive end for that team, and he started there against North Carolina State a week ago, a couple weeks ago. Big part of this def defense, no doubt about that. Stay with us. Timeout. We'll take a break with its 17-0 Texas Tech. Mike Smith helped out. Welcome back to Texas Tech. College football Saturday brought to you by Kia Serra. Raiders lead at 17-0. College football presented by Kia Serra next week returns to Fox Sports Net. Doubleheader. First, Pac-10, UCLA facing Arizona. Stanford Cardinal will then try to pull off the upset as they take on the 10th-ranked USC Trojans, trying to rebuild their national title hopes. College football continues next week, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 a.m. Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Earlier today, Fox Sports Net brought you UCLA with a 30-point win against the Washington Huskies. Big score out of the Big 12 was Texas surviving a real threat from Kansas State before winning 24-20 in Austin. Well, the Aggies have had the ball a minute 37, six plays, 35 yards, third and nine on the 48-yard line, and the pass is complete at the 32-yard line before run out of bounds as Taylor is brought down by Jabari Smith. Nice route progression that time outside. Reggie McNeil's got three receivers at the near side, and Jamar Taylor does a good job of working out. A little flag right here, watching on the left side here. Defense, he's looking to the right side, trying to draw the defense, and then throws it out to the left side to Taylor. It's good execution by the Aggies. Flag is thrown against Texas A&M. So once again, it's going to be frustrating for Coach Dennis Franchoni. Illegal motion on the offense. The man in motion started upfield before the ball was snapped. It's five yards and replay third down. Yeah, and that was Jamar Taylor coming in motion. Both receivers come off in the same area, and Dennis Franchoni. That's just timing. Those are little things you have to work on. And the execution's not there. You're going to see here, and here's he's going to come inside. And as he moves forward, that's what happened. He moved before the snap, and that's the that's the that's the penalty. Aggies average seven penalties for 52 yards a game. This one makes it third and 14 from the 47-yard line. McNeil, short drop, looking to throw. Got a little pressure, then scampers, and then falls right down. That might be a little bit of that wet turf on that one. We'll take a look here and see as Duckett was right there. He'll get credit for the sack on the play, if you will. Let's go down to Jim Knox with an injury update. All right, Bill, right now, Mike Smith, Texas Tech, up a little bit, but he's on the trainer's table. They're working on the right knee. Doesn't look good. Mike Smith, a great deal of pain right now. Doesn't look like he'll be back in, Bill. Came in with 21 tackles in the year, six and a half for loss, and a couple of sacks. And for a Tech defense that's basically young, still trying to find itself, that's a big blow. Fourth and 17 from the 44. And Skates punts it away. Welker looking for room. Flag 
thrown as he is wrestled out of bounds near the 20. One yard line, I believe it is, and Tim Van Zant covering on the play. That's right there at, at the point where the receiver caught the ball was moving. Looked like the, the back judge threw the penalty. It's going to be the illegal block on the kick return. Texas Tech after that 39 yard punt by AM's Cody Skates hurts itself with the penalty and he just push it back. in the back on the return. Half the distance to the goal and it's first down. Take a look right here. You're going to see the penalty come in here. They're going to block in the back right there and see the flag come in right here right after the, after the play. That's the official right there on top of it. Don Lewis. First to 10, and a timeout is called. We'll take a break. College football presented by Kia Sarah returns in a moment. Welcome back, Texas Tech, with a 17 0 lead in the second quarter. And Red Raiders, BJ Simmons, 12 of 18 for 167 yards. And he'll set them up first and 10 from their own eight yard line. Simmons on his own one completes it, but falling down Henderson for a loss on the play, it appears. For Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to Mike Goldberg. Hey, Bill, an upset in the SEC. The real Auburn has arrived, hosting number seven Tennessee, Jason Campbell, the quarterback, to Ben Abunani. Third straight win for the Tigers after an 0-2 start. Big upset. I guess. Thank you, Burn. Wait until October to get it going. After the big buildup of the preseason, and Southern Cal went down there and spanked him. People forgot about him, but there's certainly the talent there with that program. Second 11 ball on the seventh. Simmons fires a strike to Glover. First down, Texas Tech at the 21-yard line. Well, a &M continues to rush three players on the quarterback, and that's just not getting it done. The offensive line does a good job here, but giving him enough time to throw the football. You see the one, two, three rushers. That's the only thing that B.J. has to worry about. Hey, just find the guy that comes open, and he finds Glover for the first down. I think that Carl Torbush has to find a way to get to that quarterback and just knock him off rhythm. Those receivers just finding spots in zone defense isn't getting it done. First to 10. Simmons dancing around and then just unloads this one. Glover, the closest man to it. Well, Texas Tech head coach Mike Leach has done a great job in his fourth year here. Actually recruited his quarterback at another school. BJ is a truly a talented guy that I tried to recruit hard out of high school uh, when I was at OU, and then he ended up at. Uh, Texas Tech, so I caught up to him anyway. But uh, uh, you know, I, I'm confident in his ability, and certainly have enjoyed uh, watching his progress there at Texas Tech. Well, I guess you see, he set a Big 12 record for total yards each of the last two games. Earlier tonight, he passed Tom Wilson, is now number six on the single-season passing yardage here at Tech. This time, finally brought down, and the pressure comes from Justin Warren, a freshman out of Tyler, Texas, Tyler Lee. Well, on the left side of the defensive front here, you're going to try to get inside. It's just a one-on-one -on -one bull rush. Take a look, he's going to go inside on the defensive, ta on the offensive tackle and go inside. He's got a little rip there and come straight to the quarterback, and BJ doesn't have a chance. But still the three-man rush, and you're trying to get it done with one-on-one -on -one pass rushes, and... It's not going to happen a lot, but Warren with a good job there. You know, other than intentional grounding in the first quarter, that's the only time they've really had much heat really on it. Steps up here, third and 14, and incomplete. Intended for Henderson out of the backfield. So AM's defense stiffens and now finally gets a chance to win the field position back. Well, the receivers are trying to go all over the place. You see them how they bunch there and then they come across. Receivers are sitting there in the middle of the zone. Torian Henderson, number 19, the tailback coming out and B.J. has him, but just, just a bad throw. The thing doesn't bode well if you're an AM fan. The Aggies have struggled in the second half, and Tech's highest scoring quarter has been the fourth quarter. They tend to wear people out as the night goes on. Fourth and 14 from the 17, and the punter from the one, Reyes. It's a 
Boomer that then rolls favorably for Tech inside the 35-yard line. So they don't get as great a field position as they'd hoped for for Texas A&M. We'll be back following this timeout. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier. By Dr. Pepper, be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. By Campbell's Chunky Soup, it fills you up right. And today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. Surf the web up to five times faster. Look at the Texas Tech campus here in Lubbock. Bill Land, Gary Reasons up top, Jim Knox on the premises. You never know where Jim will be coming to you from. Glad to have you with us here this late night special as Texas Tech with a 17-0 lead, 10.45 to go in the first half after a 50-yard punt. AM first to 10 from its own 33. McNeil sets up to throw. Got a man at the 35 and down to the 25-yard line is Taylor. Great reception by Jamar Taylor. That's what I was talking about earlier in the ball game, Bill. The play action pass works well for this offense and takes a little rhythm out of the defense. The defense has to honor the, the run here. Watch the play fake here. And then Jamar Taylor, number two, is going to go down the sideline here. Watch him go right down the hash mark. And then the quarterback hits him right in stride. It's a three deep zone coverage. And he just splits the safety in the deep corner. Good job of throwing the ball by Reggie McNeil. 44 yards on the pass play, and Taylor did six receptions for 128 yards in last year's game and scored a touchdown against Tech. Nearly broke that one loose here. McNeil on first and 10 for the 23, going for six, and it is incomplete intended for Murphy. Well covered by the Tech secondary. Smith putting pressure on. Well, trying to get it done through the air. This AM bunch is trying to match what Texas Tech has done, throwing the football. Reggie McNeil, little heat though. This defense is playing inspired football, and he takes a little pop there at the end of the play. Conversely, B.J. Simmons only tackled one time in this football game that I could see. Second and ten, the ball at the 23 for Texas A&M. Oh, Aggies, they really need they need six. They need to get on the board, get a little momentum, and kind of slow down Tech. They got a good job defensively in the last series. Ags trying to settle in after a quick start from Texas Tech. Lewis slams it off the right side. Not much doing against that Tech front. Courtney Lewis, a redshirt freshman from Houston, Madison. That big Chris Hedler doing a good job there. The freshman, the 6'3", 309 pounder there. Doing a good job getting into the backfield and causing Courtney Lewis to, to cut it up inside. Not where he really wanted to go. Lewis came in with 310 yards for the season, averaging five and a half a carry and five touchdowns. Not been the answer tonight as Tech defense is stiffing. Third and nine now at the 22 of the Red Raiders. AM missed an earlier field goal attempt. McNeil looking for a block. Cuts it back to the 20. 15. McNeil 10. 5. And McNeil knocked out of bounds near the three yard line. There is the shiftiness of Reggie McNeil, the sophomore from Lufkin, Texas. Well, when you drop back at the quarterback spot, you're trying to find open receivers. You have one of two choices. You can throw the football, but if they're covered, you have nothing else to do but to run the football or throw it away. You see good coverage in the secondary by the Red Raiders, and Reggie McNeil is going to pull the ball down and just try to make something out of nothing, which he does very nicely here, getting inside the five-yard line. Good speed, 4-4 in the 40, and almost scores a touchdown. Yeah, he let Big Allen Ruber get ahead of him a bit. Then he cut it back against the grain like a good running back. And it's first and goal to go from the three for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Lewis, the call. Lewis cuts to the outside, and Lewis, nice little show of leg, and then moving in for the end zone. And Texas A&M gets on the board for the first time tonight. Well, they needed an answer, and that's exactly what they did, coming down the field with a nice drive. Courtney Lewis showing that he's got the speed to win the corner. A little explosive position there, a little explosiveness in his running ability from the tailback spot for the Aggies. You saw one of the benefits of being in the Corps of Cadets if you're a Texas A&M <laughs> student. Get to kiss your date on any Aggie score, so they're going, yeah, about time. So now the point after attempt by Pegram 
He is 9 of 10 in these this year. Six play, 67 yard drive. And the kick is good. So AM on the board. It is 16 to 7, Texas Tech. Texas Tech with Lewis getting the touchdown, his sixth of the year on our Nissan scoring drive. Six plays, 67 yards, 133 is all it required. McNeil now 146 yards of total offense, 88 through the air, 58 through the ground. The kickoff to Tech went through the end zone. They get it first and 10 on the 20-yard line. And the bust of play for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to Mike Goldberg. Bill Land, a little baseball playoffs. Game three, Fenway Park, Red Sox Athletics. Red Sox in a must win. 11th inning tied at one. Trot Nixon, deep to center field. A walk-off home run. The Red Sox live to play another game. That's tomorrow, game four. They win. Boy, talk about that. The year those Red Sox have been having. And they stretch it for another day in Beantown. Some great baseball action that's taken place in the last couple of days. How about that Marlins win today? Second and 13 here. Pass completed over the middle out to the 27-yard line. Wes Welker got rocked, but it hangs on to the football. He needs to get to the 30 for the first down. Singleton made the tackle on the play. Wes Welker, one of the most productive players in Texas Tech history, doing a good job working to the open spot, and the quarterback's just going to find him working there and catches the ball nicely and gets close to the first down. Going to bring up a third and short. Total yards this quarter. Tech, after that rousing first quarter, being out yarded. That can change in a hurry with Simmons at the controls, though. Third down and two. Nice hands by Peters, and then, where are you talking about? Yards after the catch. He makes a great catch, but he was vulnerable to get popped, really to his credit, to go ahead and pick up another four or five yards. That was an excellent catch. His, his body was going one way, and his hands reached back away from his momentum and does a nice job of pulling the football in. You see here Simmons throws the ball down and outside. The hands there, and then what you're talking about, Bill, the yak yards, the yards after the catch. These are key for these receivers because they're able to take these short passes and turn them into the longer gains that time. A first down here for Texas Tech. Simmons over the 200-yard mark at passing now. And Let's go down to Jim Knox, talking about the attitude and the atmosphere. Jim? Yeah, we talked about it earlier, Bill. Intensity level with the Aggies offense beginning to get it right now. They came over to the bench. Reggie McNeil, all smiles. The coach is up in their face. Here we go. Let's get it going now. The intensity level for that Aggie offense is rising a bit, guys. Yeah, you just, it's, it's kind of an adjustment, isn't it, Gary, that you know Tech's going to score, and you just cannot let that get you down. Second and four. And Simmons completes it across the middle for the first down to the 45-yard line. Tell you what, they're making a pay. Francis, the receiver that time. You know, it's like Dennis Franchoni talked about getting out here in a shootout. That's not the kind of football game that they're able to play and think that they can win with this young football team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They've got to find a way to get some stops, but really haven't been able to stop B.J. Simmons tonight. For his production, 214 yards and a couple of touchdowns already. This young man put up over 600 yards a week ago. Yeah, on average nights, right around 500. So he's looking at his, oh my gosh, I've only got 639. I gotta get going here. That's the time remaining in this first half. When I think things started fast, like they like to do for Texas Tech offensively, they came out shooting, they delivered the ball well. and. But I think Texas A&M has settled down a little bit, especially on the offensive side of the ball. They've got some production. They've got some points on the board. Now the defense needs to respond. They need to get a situation where they're trying to receive a punt. You know, maybe make something happen in the kicking game. Dennis Franchoni looks on as his Aggies trail 17-7. It is second and nine from the 43 of Texas A&M. Simmons from the gun. Flag thrown, hold everything. Texas Tech. Prior to the snap, a false start on the offense. Five yards, and it's still second down. The shift there. We gave you Simmons passing numbers as a running team tonight. They just got 15 yards on the ground. But you mentioned earlier, that means nothing to Coach Leach. He wants points, and he doesn't care how he gets them. He wants production. The most important thing for him is to move the ball, move the chain, put points on the board. And doesn't matter if he's running the ball or throwing the ball. I think he just prefers to just move the ball. 
Mike last year had his club in the Big 12 title chase. They finished five and three, third in the South. Of course, beat Texas, beat Texas A&M. Second and 14 for Simmons. Incomplete at the 34-yard line. And Francis again had trouble hanging on here. Our Bank of America higher standards. Well, we talked about Mike Leach. This is year four. Look what's happened offensively since he's arrived here in Lubbock. Keep raising the bar every year, and right now at 42 and a half points a ball game, that's just an impressive stat. If they can keep that up as they go into conference play, this first conference game of the year against Texas A&M, that would be a, a tremendous feat. Of course, he had Josh Heupel at Oklahoma for a year, then came here. The Sooners went on to win the national title. Kingsbury just uh, sensational in his tenure here under Coach Leach, and then Simmons coming in and his senior year, and he has been incredible as well. Third and 14 from the 48-yard line. Walker, he'll score! Red Raider touchdown! Well, this is all B.J. Simmons, audible at the line of scrimmage. He sees the defensive alignment, and he calls this play. Offensive line checks the protection. All the receivers check their routes, and then you find your go-to guy, Wes Welker. Get him off the middle of the field one-on-one -on -one with a safety, and he just takes the inside route and runs away from him. Excellent job of execution by Texas Tech on the audible. Simmons hits Welker, 48 yards, and the touchdown. The kick by Too Good is that. And it is 24 to 7, Texas Tech. Well, Wes Welker has put up a lot of numbers here at Texas Tech in his career. This just adds to it. This young man is an excellent receiver, and B.J. Simmons throws a strike here. Look at the protection. It's fine. The receiver is out in front of the defender, and there's no way that he's going to be caught. That's an excellent job. Singleton, who has the coverage on him, just cannot keep up. Simmons makes a little outside move and then takes it to the inside, and... Excellent job of throwing the football, the catch, and the run. Welker's 13th career touchdown reception moves him above Donnie Anderson. Just goes down the middle of the field, right down the hash mark, and just outruns the defense. Wes Welker shows he's got adequate speed to, to make plays. Nick Simmons likes it. Three TD passes for him tonight. DJ 18 of 27 for 261 yards. And our Nissan scoring drive, eight plays, 80 yards. Simmons to Walker, of course, the biggie. And Simmons, who knows, maybe headed for another record night. He said he averages around 500. Well, he quickly picked up 48. This is a quick strike offense. Uh, they're not going to slow it down at all. They're going to keep doing what they're doing. And there could be another record setting out, as you said, Bill. On the kickoff, Texas A&M, Taylor got upended, and I mean upended, at the 11-yard line. Well, our FoxSports.com poll for the day, we'd love you to respond. Go ahead and get on the internet. Who is the best wide receiver named Williams? Reggie from Washington, Roy from Texas, Mike of USC, Roy Dell from Tulane, or Oregon's Demetrius? To vote, log on, FoxSports.com, and click on NCAA football. Again, nine yard return and tough field position for the Aggies. Again, great coverage by Texas Tech on the kick coverage team. When you score a lot of points, you've got to have a kick team that can go out there and cover. Texas A&M has had to go the long field the entire night. First and 10 at the 12 for Reggie McNeil. Thanks to Farmer. The play action. Got Taylor at the 50. And Taylor hangs on inside to Red Raider territory. Well, that'll get you out of a hole in a hurry. No doubt about it. That's what you like to do. Get your number one receiver out there. Get him in space and get him down the middle of the field. Reggie McNeil's going to step in comfortably on this throw and gets Jamar Taylor, number two, right in the middle of the field. And that's kind of a mismatch there. You're trying to run away from the cornerback. Well, the receiving duos, they got a pretty good one here in Taylor and Murphy with 186 receptions, 2,792 yards. Porter and Johnson, Bernstein and Walker, some of the best in Texas A&M history. And Taylor showing you his value right there. 
First to 10 at the 47 after the 42-yard pickup. McNeil comes back through the air down to the 35-yard line as Van Zant makes the grab. Marcus Boyd makes the stop. Tim Van Zant, boy, he's a neat story. A walk-on and really earned his scholarship. Got it right before they went to Virginia Tech. And he responded with a big day against the Hokies. He came in with 10 receptions for 129 yards in the year. And growing up, kind of a smallish young man, called him Tiny Tim as a nickname. But he has come up big here, really has impressed a lot of people with his tenure here, the senior receiver at Texas A&M, and doing a nice job for him. Out of Victoria, Texas, first and 10 of the 34 after that play. McNeil. Nowhere to go as the Red Raider defense collapses upon him. Now that's a coverage sack. He's only got two receivers out in the pattern that time, and Reggie McNeil trying to find the open guys, and there's nobody there. You see the coverage down here on the bottom and then one at the top and the tight end there. I see a third guy. I didn't realize that, but Reggie McNeil, no one's, no one's open, so he has to step up, and the pass protection breaks down. It's a good job by Texas Tech defensively. Mike Smith, who we saw get hurt earlier, back on to help on the play. And Patrice Rajondo Mwamba also in on the action. Second and 15 now at the 39. McNeil again to throw and finds Farmer. Farmer inside the five-yard line. Right down the middle with a Keith Joseph. I beg your pardon, Keith Joseph, the junior out of Houston, Lamar. And Joseph sets him up in scoring position. Well, this is a play-action pass. You've got Joseph just faking through the middle. Nobody accounts for him when he comes through the line. Good job that time, Reggie McNeil finding him right in the middle of the field, no one covering on him, and good execution gets him down to the five-yard line. Joseph came in with just two receptions for 29 yards. First and goal for the four. 24-7, Aggies trying to close it. And Zant, the man in motion. Pitch to Lewis, he got the earlier touchdown. Stopped dead at the five-yard line. Yeah, look at him forward motion back to the four in the line of scrimmage. Well, this is where the tough yardage comes in here. This offensive line's got to find a way to push this Tech defense back, and they want to run the football and bang it in there. That's what they'll have to do. But Reggie McNeil, I think his best option, Bill, is being able to give him a two-way go. That, what I mean by that is a chance to run the football, and his choice or throw the football wouldn't be surprised to see him rolling out in this situation. They make it officially at the five. Second and golden to five as Lewis goes off. Van Zandt again in motion. Joseph, the first back, and then they play action, and now McNeil. McNeil just couldn't find an opening as he scrambles again back to just around the five-yard line. Reggie McNeil on the play action pass here. He tried, he, I think he takes a quick look to the outside. He's got both receivers to the near side. He looks out there quickly, but loses confidence in their ability to get open and just tries to make something out of nothing in the middle of the field and good job by Tech converging on it. Proud to be roaring now. Third and goal from the five, 225 to go. First half action here in Lubbock. AM three of five, third down conversions. This one a huge one. Taylor the man in motion. McNeil goes that way. Complete. Taylor, touchdown, Texas A&M. Well, that's Jamar the, Taylor. Yeah, that's the rollout play I was expecting on the previous play, Bill. Good chance to get Reggie McNeil out in space where he can see the defense and read it, find an open receiver, or take the ball under wing and run the football. Jamar Taylor, good job of working the outside, a strike, and a quick score here by Texas A&M. Comes with 2.06 to go in the second quarter. And Taylor gets his first touchdown of the night. Pegram on for the point after. Good hold. And it is good. 24 to 14 on the pass and the point after. Everything's going to come right at you here. Jamar Taylor's a receiver on the outside and watching work to the outside. Reggie McNeil's going to throw a strike right, right to the number two on his chest. And Excellent job of execution on the, the rollout pass play. And it's 24-14 Texas A&M on the short side by 10 now. As seven plays, 89 yards, and 536 
Jamar Taylor didn't play against Vautech a couple weeks ago, Bill. And last week against Pitt, five catches for 110 yards. You see the scoring drive here. Good job of moving the ball down the field, 88 yards. It's a big drive. So Taylor with 89 receiving yards this evening. And Nissan scoring drive as AM answers Texas Tech. So this one has settled into a real offensive show. You know, Jamar Taylor, he's got a tattoo on his arm. It's actually on his shoulder of the Grim Reaper. <laughs> it's kind of a unique story. Why would someone put a Grim Reaper on his shoulder? He says, you know, he's just kind of a methodical guy, but he says, you know, that just goes to show you never know how much time you got left. You want to make the most of it. And he really wants to make the most of his career at Texas A&M. And he comes up with a huge play here in the second quarter. The kickoff. Texas A&M can't gloat. Not with his quick, quick strike offense of Texas Tech. And hesitated for a moment, and quickly bringing it out, Johnny Mack. Mack again with a 45, and Mack says, hey, I'll do my part here. Johnny Mack, what a streak, 40-plus yards, 47 yards, I believe, on the return. Man, he's quick. Johnny Mack kind of hesitates in the, in the end zone. A lot of times they're going to stop on that, but no, he takes it out. That kind of slows the coverage of Texas A&M and finds the outside and watch the speed here down the sideline. Not to the 49, so actually give him about 52 as he took it about three deep. And it's now first and 10 at the 49 of Texas Tech. 158, now do remember the Red Raiders are out of timeouts. The running play stuffed here as Henderson was brought down. Our Nissan halftime report. Make sure you stay with us here on Fox Sports Net as Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, and the gang will be out there in the studios. And a special interview with Mark Mangino. Got his KU Jayhawks a big win over Missouri last week, enjoying the week off. And of course, Big 12 scores and highlights all on the Nissan Halftime Report here on Fox Sports Net. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Serra. Texas Tech up 10. Second and 10. Simmons. Will run it and scampers out of bounds. The 45 of Texas A&M. It'll be third around four as stops the clock. First time we've seen Simmons run the football. Not a bad option for him. He's got pretty good speed and able to run the ball outside and you know not take a loss on the play. Get something positive and get out of bounds to stop the clock. Kind of a heady quarterback. Remember, he's a senior. He's been in this program a number of years. He's been behind Cliff Kingsbury and getting his opportunity this year. And certainly isn't disappointing Texas Tech and Red Raider fans. Third and four from the 45 yard line. Simmons, nowhere to go this time. Trying to unload it to stop the clock. He completes it. Francis, 25. Oh, my. What a play by the Red Raiders. Jones brings down Francis inside the 15. Bill, that looked like he was a quarterback draw the whole way, the way B.J. Simmons stepped up in the pocket after he took the snap, and then he bounced back out and finds Carlos Francis on the outside. This is a heady play by this quarterback. You think it's a run play? You think he's going to get caught there in the backfield? No, he throws it up over the top and finds Francis. Wow, this is a huge play to him and a big first down. Francis, third reception, 50 yards total now, and it's first to 10 at the 13, 102 to go in the half. Again, remember, Red Raiders without a timeout. Simmons has Henderson beside him. Telling the crowd, settle down, and when I deliver, then you can go crazy. Simmons breaks the pocket here. Peters off his hands. Might have been out of bounds anyway, but still it stops the clock. 56 seconds remaining. Today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. Bill and Gary Regions, Jim Knox with you. Here's Sarah's presentation of College Football Saturday, Big 12 opener for these two clubs, Texas Tech. 24 14 leader Watton Moore, second and 10 from the 13. Simmons. Now this 
of the strike by B.J. Simmons shows he's got enough arm strength to zip the ball in there. And Jared Hicks caught the ball once, maybe twice, but still a score here for Texas Tech. But they're going to get a celebration penalty, maybe a taunting penalty, I think, on Jared Hicks for throwing the ball at they wanted the Tech, uh, Texas A&M defensive players. Good night here for B.J. Simmons. Excellent job, and Jared Hicks talking to him, just a redshirt freshman. After the play, there was unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. The touchdown is good, and the penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Hicks, a freshman out of Houston, Sharpston High School, came in with 13 receptions. That is his second touchdown reception. 13 yards on the play. Now they reset for the point after attempt by too good. Well, the Aggies score, but they left Texas Tech way too much time. It doesn't take them long to move down the field. You know what, they got it back with 2.06. And now with 51 seconds to play in the half, it is 31 to 14. He's a good target, 6'4", 208 pound receiver, Jared Hicks is. A little talking to you on the sideline. He's a little excited because B.J. Simmons shows. Watch the zip that he puts on his football. Between two defenders there and right in front, bingo. Jared Hicks, good concentration. Stay with it and makes the grab. Well, it wasn't as exaggerated as I thought. Although Leftwich and the Pennington and the run of quarterbacks I've had, they've had through there, shouldn't surprise you. And of course, Florida, no shock there from particularly the Spurrier days. Mike Leach. And light it up with the best of them with his offensive schemes. 31-14, and that penalty puts it back to the 20-yard line for the kickoff. And now Texas A&M with 51 seconds, a couple timeouts to work with. We'll see how punishing that penalty is. Taken at the seven-yard line. Wow. Big hit inside the 25-yard line. This week on the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show, Mike Holmgren returns to Green Bay and we'll look at a surprising Seahawks plus more on Emmett's return to Dallas and Mariucci's return to San Francisco. And with a win under his belt is Donovan McNabb ready to carry the Eagles on his shoulders. It's all on the Ford F-150 Fox NFL Sunday pregame show tomorrow at noon. That's Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. A 18-yard return gives Texas A&M the ball, first and 10 from the 26. McNeil finds Farmer, and Farmer will scamper out of bounds. A little shy of the first down to the 34. Well, good progression read that time by Reggie McNeil, one, two, three, and then get out to his outlet to, to Farmer, who's on the sideline, he gets out of bounds. Well, what a hit that uh, you know, Thomas I think, took on that kickoff. I think that was Cody Hodges, and he's a, and he's a quarterback. Backup quarterback, but a big one too. 6'1, 210 pounder coming down and laying some leather on the kick team. We want to give credit where credit is due on those special teams. Second down and one from the 35 after the nine yard pickup, and McNeil fires it incomplete, actually deflected off of Ryan Acock, and Acock with four interceptions already this year just missed number five. This ball zipped out there. Reggie McNeil throws it. Take a look at the top of the screen here. You're going to see Jamar Taylor, number two, coming into the, the picture. Gets a little bump there, but he just doesn't continue on the route. And you see Acock right behind. The ball hits him in the two. And would have had number five on the season. That number of those four interceptions leads the NCAA so far early in this season. Senior out of Lubbock, Coronado. And now McNeil. Scrambles, broke a tackle, unloads, out of bounds. No flag thrown. Got past the line of scrimmage. He's outside the tackle box, so that's a good way to throw it away. Well, uh, fourth and one, I think they definitely have to punt the football. They, they don't want to give Texas Tech a short field for sure. On the 14, in trouble, and then slips and falls. You say in trouble, he had a little alley on that far side had he been able to turn it up, but he falls there, and they'll get the ball with 11 seconds remaining. And 12th man for Texas A&M, Blake Kendrick tonight. From Willis, Texas, 6'1", 217, a junior in on the coverage. He 
stay with us here. Full halftime show as well as the first half highlights. And Tech and quarterback Simmons just decides to down the football. And we'll take care of that first half right there. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. There have been plenty, mostly for Tech. DJ Simmons and Nehemiah Glover hook up here for a couple of scores early in the football game. They kick the field goals as well. And I tell you, this Texas Tech offense, when they're working, Bill, and they're clicking, things are just magical for them. Wes Welker gets in the action here in a record setter as well. Texas A&M got things clicking as well. Courtney Lewis getting around the corner for the score. And Reggie McNeil starting to come on fire here a little bit, throwing the football well to the outside for the second score of the night. Sensational grab by Hicks and four touchdown passes for Simmons. Here's Jim Knox with Mike Leach. All right, thank you, Bill. Mike, I tell you what, four touchdowns by B.J. Simmons in the first half, over 300 yards. Are you surprised how well your offense is doing against the Zaggy defense? I don't think about it very much. We uh, finished the first half. Now we need a great second half. I appreciate it, Mike. Right, Best thanks. of luck in the second half. Bill? All right, thank you very much, Jim. It's halftime with the score 31-14 Texas Tech. Now let's join Mike Goldberg and Kellen Winslow for the Nissan Halftime Report. Welcome back, College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera from Lubbock, Texas. It's the Texas Tech Red Raiders with a halftime lead. Bill and Gary Reason's back with you. And it's been the B.J. Simmons show, J or Gary. He's been phenomenal. Well, I'll tell you, a week ago, six touchdown passes in that football game, four touchdown passes tonight. This young man has done a great job throwing the football, getting started early with Nehemiah Glover getting in the action. A couple of touchdowns to him early in this football game. He spread it around, though. He doesn't go to one guy. He finds a open Jamar, excuse me, Wes Walker going down the middle of the field. And Wes Walker also here to hit with a great catch here late in the second quarter. On fire, four touchdowns in this football game, and Texas Tech is moving the football pretty much at will, and B.J. Simmons showing why he's the total offense leader in college football. What a performance in the first half. We'll give you the numbers in just a moment. Texas Tech hits it off, the Aggies, and it is down in the end zone by Texas A&M with Terrence Murphy, and they'll bring it out first to 10 on the 20-yard line. We'll take a look at the first half stats here. Tech 16 10 edge in the first downs, but yards per play about the same. AM 7.7, Tech 7.2, and the passing yards, AM 189, Tech 305, but Tech's been getting in the end zone. Been the difference. Reggie McNeil will come out with his crew as McNeil, 6'2, 190 pound sophomore from Lufkin. Bill, I think they need to come out hot, too. I think Reggie McNeil needs to get this offense clicking and get it going early here in the second half for them to have a chance in this football game. And he wants to go deep. Incomplete. And both receiver and defender look for a flag and intended for Jamar Taylor. Well, Jamar Taylor's going to run down the field. Tim Norman's got coverage on him here. And a little jostling at the end of the play. Non-call here. Take a look, see if there's enough contact to warrant something. Reggie McNeil probably should throw this ball out a little bit further because I think Jamar Taylor has enough speed to get by the, the defender. Good job of coverage that time by Tim Norman. And it'll be second and 10 from the 20. Like the idea for AM though. Go ahead and yeah, go for both early. Out. McNeil tried to zip this one to the left side. It is incomplete intended for Murphy. Let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill just got through talking to Coach Fran. He told me the offense, they got to take advantage of their opportunities. He looks to slow the thing down a little bit, but mainly take advantage of those opportunities. I asked him about getting pressure on B.J. Simmons, and Coach Fran told me they think they're doing the right thing. That is just rushing three and trying to get them off rhythm. We'll see what happens here in the second half. They want to keep the ball in front of them. They have not been doing a great job of that. They're not real happy the way their team has tackled this season. Third and 10 from the 20. McNeil scrambling loose. Stiff arms one tackler and gets to the 24. And it'll be a kicking situation. Let's look at the first half drives by AM. The three, three and out. Now the eight plays. Eight plays and punt, seven plays and punt. We got a touchdown here. We got a couple of these things working pretty good there. And they punted the latter part of the second quarter. But those two scores showed that they can move the ball against this Texas Tech defense and just need to get that going again. Welker is back to receive the punt. Fake punt. A fake punt. 
and up the middle, and it does not work. Stopped at the 27-yard line on the fake punt, and 12th man. Tech was ready and waiting, whether a and whether Tech was, and now it'll be Texas Tech first to 10 at the 26-yard line. Now this is a call here by Francione trying to make a play. He snaps it to the up back, Kendrick. Good job there by the Red Raiders defensively and on the coverage team. A couple of guys come from the outside. Looks like the open hole was open, but they closed that quickly and stopped him short of the first down. So Tech was there making the play for Texas Tech was Micah Sweats. Here is Simmons. Henderson. Henderson broke the tackle and got inside the 15-yard line. Well, this is something when you're a head football coach and you make a call to go on it on fourth down and backed up in your own territory and trying to make a play on fourth down, it kind of backfires on you. Dennis Franchoni called the fake punt, and now you give Texas Tech excellent field position to work with, slip it out there for a slip screen to Torian Henderson and got enough speed to make a big play here. And this is something that A&M just really can't afford coming out in this football game in the third quarter and allowing Texas Tech to get right on the board again. Simmons, 21 of 31 for 323 yards. Four touchdowns. Will it be a fifth in a moment? First to 10. Locks it up. And it is caught. Henderson. Yes, it is a fifth touchdown pass. B.J. Simmons showing he's got the full compliment throwing the football. This is a very nice touch pass over the top of the defender. Torian Henderson pulls it in nicely. Execution is what Mike Leach wants from his offense, and B.J. Simmons is certainly delivering tonight. Tech taking advantage of the situation here. Aggies gambled, and it backfires. And just 16 seconds, two plays, 26 yards. And too good with a point after. And it is good. 38-14. College football presented by Kiyosara and Tech again for the fifth touchdown pass by Sim. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Kiyosara, the new value frontier. By Dr. Pepper, BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. By Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. And today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. Surf the web up to five times faster. Well, they're surfing SBC Jones Stadium pretty fast here. The Red Raiders zip to a 38-14 lead now in the third quarter. Torin Henderson got the touchdown. His fifth reception, 49 yards, 14-yard scoring pass. Murphy brings it out for AM. And he is hit hard at the 15-yard line. One more time, Simmons' is fifth TD score. I'm talking about B.J. Simmons and his touch, but Torian Henderson right here, watch the move that he puts on number six, Brian Singleton, who's got man coverage on him. Take a look there, he's got the coverage. Wiggle there, can't, can't hold him up with the line of scrimmage and the toss over the top. Nice throw and a good catch. Nice move with the line of scrimmage by Torian Henderson. Nissan scoring drive, two plays, 26 yards. Simmons racking him up tonight. Henderson gets into the act with his first score of the night, and that is his fourth TD through the air. First to 10 of the 15 for Texas A&M. Play action. McNeil. Looked like somebody may have got just a hand on the ball or the wrist, maybe. McNeil. I don't know if that affected the throw or not, but he's certainly under pressure there. That ball sailed. I'm not sure it was Reggie the ball tipped or, or Tim Van Zandt who was out there who turned inside when Reggie expected him to go outside. Not a rhythm here for this Texas A&M offense. Haven't ran the ball effectively enough to really set up their play action passing game. And now they're in a throwing situation game here. And I'm not sure that this is what they would like to do in this game. And Reggie McNeil, well, you might see Dustin Long come in who threw for seven touchdowns against his Red Raiders a year ago. 
Second down and 15, McNeil trying to find a crease. Finally, dives forward near the 20-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines and Jim Knox. All right, Bill, what a night B.J. Simmons is doing. He turned around, he told me they're gonna put 70 points on the Aggies. We'll have to wait and see on that, but I tell you, there's one Aggie very familiar with B.J. Simmons. That is Les Caning, the offensive coordinator at Texas A&M. You see his father, Les Caning, senior coach B.J. during high school, Clear Creek and outside of Houston. Now, Les told me that he watched B.J. when he was playing for his dad. He actually coached with Miami at the time. He said he could tell right then that he's going to be an exceptional quarterback. Yeah, he tossed for 1,597 yards his final year there. And again, the defense answers on McNeil. Dell Duck at the defensive end does a nice job coming inside and working back there and getting on the legs of McNeil before he can set up and throw the football. A couple of times of pressure here. Couple times pressure by Duckett doing a good job getting in the, in the backfield of Texas A&M. Going to watch on the right side here as Duckett comes inside and little loop stunt there gets inside of the center, swims him and gets the sack. His fourth sack of the season, and now punting out of the end zone, it's Texas A&M having to kick it away with Skates. He gets it off. Welker from the 37, 45, 50. Welker. Accelerates all the way to the 43 yard line of Texas A&M. We'll take a brief break. It is the Aggies trailing the Raiders 38-14. Welcome back, College Football Saturday, presented by Kiyosera, Texas A&M on the short side. Texas Tech 38-14 at SBC Jones Stadium. The Red Raiders on top. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, and Jim Knox with our Home Depot. Trivia question, Wes Welker tied with three others for the most punt returns per touchdown in NCAA history was seven. Who are the other three? The Home Depot trivia, que trivia question, think about it. Welker has almost broken a couple tonight. Last one he returned 15 yards after a 38 yard punt and it'll be first and 10 at the 42. Simmons shovels it off, Henderson. Tried to follow a block, almost got the first down inside the 34-yard line. And let's take a look at the tech drives tonight. Well, you see a lot of them here. This is what's impressive right here. You know, you get all this action right there to the end zone. Texas Tech has done what they wanted to, 11 plays, seven plays, you know, just a quick seven-play drive, and then an eight-play and a five-play drive, all touchdowns, all passes by B.J. Simmons. Yeah, that was the first half, and then, of course, they got the last touchdown to start the second half after the Aggies went for a fake punt deep in their own territory. It failed, and AM made them pay for it. Speaking of which, Glover on the reception here, and he takes the ball down inside the 15-yard line. He got the first two scores tonight on passes from Simmons. Well, he shows he's got enough speed outside to make a stop and come back and and go and move after the catch. The yards after the catch, I think, are key for this offense. When they have receivers that can run after the catch and cause the defense to miss, ta uh, to miss tackles, that's what you want. You want receivers that can run with the football. These guys may have been tailbacks in high school, but they use miss wide receivers here in this offense. 16 yards in the play to Glover, first and 10 from the 15. Simmons again. Peters. Trying to turn and catch at the same time. <laughs> Couldn't quite come up with it. But I mean, Simmons making that comment to Jim about, we're gonna get 70. What an attitude this guy brings. You gotta love it. We had a chance just to watch him a little bit yesterday, kind of a walkthrough. He has a certain feel to him, and it's not cocky. I think there's just a swagger, but it is the ultimate in confidence, isn't it? It really is. He does have that swagger. He is a young man. I think he's got complete control of that offense. He's been in this system enough. Been here three years watching Cliff Kingsbury operate. He knows the numbers that Cliff put up on the board. And you know, he wasn't trying to be a Cliff Kingsbury. He's just running the show his way, and he's doing an excellent job of that. Second and 10 from the 15. Henderson beside Simmons this time. Glover, 10, 5, touchdown, Texas 10. Oh, wow. The flag is thrown. I got a feeling that's taunting as he went into the end zone. Another unsportsmanlike penalty here, but still a sixth touchdown pass for B.J. Simmons tonight. Three to Nehemiah Glover as he comes across the field, just outruns the defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. 
the touchdown is good. Well, you're going to see coming from the right side, Nehemiah Glover, number six, coming across the field, and B.J. Simmons, nice touch outside, and going to run right to the corner of the end zone. Uh-oh, yeah, that's a little taunting. You don't need to do that, young man. Good call by the officials. That's just a little showboat. You don't do that in college football. Glover's third touchdown reception tonight. And six TD passes now for Simmons. Well, we've told you about uh, Dustin Long last year, said the Big 12 record was seven. Josh Fields did it against SMU, the Oklahoma State quarterback, earlier this year. Well, now two more, and Simmons will have that mark all to himself. The kick is good by two good. And Glover gets a brief talking to, but got the main job done. 45-14. Part of the 51,772 here in Lubbock with a 45-14. Let's go a flashback to 92 College Station. Red Raiders leading 17-16 time running. The Aggies, Terry Venetulius, pulls out the come from behind win, 1970s. Aggie fans remember finally Jeff Granger, a big third and eight play to set up that field goal in 1992. Bill and Gary Reese and Jim Knox with you following the penalty for the unsportsmanlike conduct, the Red Raider kickoff from the 20-yard line. And Murphy will pick it up around the goal line. 10, 15, and knocked high in the air near the 21-yard line. Let's go down to Jim Knox. Okay, Bill, reminder for college football fans, you want to know anything about this game here at Jones Stadium, send us an email. All you do is log on, foxsports.com, keyword ask Knox. That's foxsports.com, keyword ask Knox, and we will answer an email or two for you a little later on. All right, thank you, Jim. Jeremy Woods made the big tackle that upended Murphy. Foul on the kicking team. After the play, a personal foul on the receiving team. They cancel, and it's first down. Well, things getting a little ugly, Gary. That's something you don't want to see here. Uh, of course, two years ago here, there was an incident where they tore the goalpost down and some of the Red Raider fans took them into the stands to Texas A&M. Brawl broke out. Last year, Dustin Long, number 17 there, seven touchdown passes, but A&M fell at home in overtime to Texas Tech. And on the keeper, it's McNeil. They're blowing a the whistle, though. They're bringing it back. Not sure the referee put the ball in play yet. They'll sort it out here. Did the line judge throw a penalty on this sideline. I don't want to see the flag, Bill. You know, in talking about this rivalry, one thing too is that Texas Tech has bolstered security. They have run a lot of announcements throughout the week, telling people come, have a good time, but be good sports. Stay in the stands, stay off the field, and the crowd control so far appears to have run very well here. That was an option play that I talked about earlier in the ball game, where Reggie McNeil had handed the ball off inside to the tailback and. He pulled at that time, and you saw he won the corner and would have made a huge play for Texas A&M. Dennis Franchoni's probably going, all right, now what this time? Because his ball club just... Just wanted that huge play, and yeah. they wanted to get... I don't see a flag out there, but they stopped the play. Uh, the only thing I could think of is that the, the referee did not set the play in the start. They snapped it prematurely. Normally, that's just a normal reset. You go back to the line of scrimmage. Dennis Franchoni saying, hey, why do you got to do this to me, guys? Of course, early on, they had a touchdown call back when McNeil, very close, but stepped over the line of scrimmage. There was an inadvertent whistle on the play. The down will be replayed. Oh, that's tough. That yeah, is that, really that tough for A&M &M fans to watch that one. That was an excellent play by Reggie McNeil on the fake there on the, uh, the option play. Yeah, and, and that's why you, you saw Dennis, he didn't go nuts because the official just said, hey, inadvertent whistle, what can I tell you is I'm sorry, coach. First to 10 from the 20. McNeil gets the first down on the pass across the middle and <laughs> taken there by Texas A&M and they'll move the chains. Yeah, Matakis, the... The young freshman coming in, getting the tight end job spot there. You take a look at McNeil throwing over the top. 
Ending the tackles. It was a linebacker moving the tight end. Get some production there from him. And on the first down carry, they go right up the middle. Lewis, a nice run close to another first down, about nine yards. We're talking about security in this rivalry, and they're trying to keep things safe and fun for everybody. Jim's got a little bit more for us. Yeah, okay, Bill. You know what? These Red Raider fans, they camped out here to get these great seats. And just to show you the difference on the security, you go over here to the Aggie bench now. They have a little fence here, and you got security officers right here on hand. They tell me over 400 on hand for tonight's game, so the Aggies well protected this evening, guys. Texas Rangers, police, you name it, they're all here. First to 10 of the 47, Texas A&M. Trying to get it going a bit back with the ground game. Yeah, pushing the pile. You know, nothing else. Dennis Franchoni's got to figure, all right, I've got to get my defense a little breather here now and see if we can establish something. Don't worry about just getting things going offensively. Dennis Franchoni, his resume here. Time National Coach of the Year. Knows how to win football games. He's a very detailed, organized coach. And came into Texas A&M with his full coaching staff intact. And he started uh, pretty quickly. On the carry, Lewis dances into the secondary. He'll move those chains to the 33-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about 15 yards. Ken Scott and Ryan Acock make the tackle. Well, you see why they like Courtney Lewis. He's got quick feet in the hole, and he can make some people miss. A little jitter step here to get started, but then this young man has shown explosiveness. And, you know, Dennis Franchoni talked about getting back to a 1,000-yard rusher at Texas A&M, and, and I think they really feel like Courtney Lewis might be that guy that can get them there. He may become their feature back, and as they start to run the football and become more productive offensively running it, look for big things from Courtney Lewis. First and 10 from the 33, and to the 26-yard line where the tackle is made on Van Zandt. He gets another reception. You know, Texas A&M hasn't had a 1,000-yard rusher since 1999 when Dante Hall eclipsed that mark for the, for the Aggies. Yeah, the depth of this club is certainly uh, not what you would expect at Texas A&M. They've had a couple of recruiting years that were a little bit so-so, and then they lost him out of the class. I believe it was... 99 or 2000 like five guys to injury that had to retire you miss on a guy or two somebody transfers and all of a sudden they had six guys drafted last year and it's like whoa wait a minute covers a little bear right now so they got to do some quick rebuilding mcneil going deep into the end zone sliding grab out of bounds wow, that was close boy great effort there riley tydrick riley Sophomore from Crockett, Texas. Watch number 80 in a slot here. He's going to work to the flag here. A little flag route, and McNeil throws the ball out there and delivers it just that's about a step too far. Well, that's close. That is really close. Take a look here. Does he have con he's right on the sideline. His right foot is on the line, and good call by the official. He's right there. Yeah, he is right there by the pylon. And that college just keep one in. Third and one. Ball at the 24. Red Raider crowd cheering for the defense to hold here. And the dump over the middle, the ball was tipped and incomplete. And that was a third down. And now it's a fourth down and short. I'm fairly sure here this is going to be a situation where Dennis Franchoni is going to go for this. They're bringing the jumbo people into the into the formation, trying to get that yardage perhaps on the ground. 7.41 to go, third quarter. Texas Tech and Texas A&M. Red Raiders led 17-0 after one quarter, 31-14 at the half, and have quickly come out and tacked on a couple of touchdowns to start the third quarter. Fourth and one, McNeil incomplete. As McNeil just missing, overthrowing the intended receiver on the play, and Texas Tech will get the football back. Trying to go to Germany. Yeah, play action pass and trying to get the, the fourth and one there. I, you know, you need to roll that young man out. I think he, he's got a two-way go that way, and he th I think he sees the field a little bit better. When you put him in a situation where he's got one receiver to go to and no chance to run, 
that's not to his advantage. So Texas Tech, first to 10 on their own 24 yard line. Simmons with six touchdown passes tonight. And the 24 goes to work. Glover, 30, 35. Boy, they've got so many people, and they've all got different skills that stand out as Glover making the reception on that one. And they'll move the chains after the first down reception. Be first and 10 from the 37 yard line, a pickup of 13 yards. Today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. First and 10 from the 37. Simmons now 412 yards passing tonight. That last one put him over the 400 mark. Peters on the reception this time at the 42-yard line before he is pushed way back. Buell is through there. Jonte Buell, a junior from Pflugerville, Texas, Connolly High School. He knows a defense, and you got an offense that throws the ball like Texas Tech does. And you know, your defensive backs come in the game, and they have to. They're going to get tired. And, Take a look at how he spreads the wealth around seven different receivers with a catch and the four touchdowns. Yeah, who do you focus on? It's tough. You know, <laughs> you've got to just kind of play good, good defense all around. You've got to pick your spots, pressure the quarterback, and I don't think they pressured the quarterback near enough in this football game trying to break his rhythm. They just try to play in the secondary, trying to match up, and, and he's just too good a quarterback, I think, to, to be able to do that. Second and five from the 42, and he completes another reception. Jones covering on the play this time. Francis, the receiver. Well, the Home Depot trivia question about Wes Welker, tied with three others for the most punt returns for touchdown in NCAA history, was seven. Who are the other three? How about some Big 12 folks? David Allen from Kansas State, Johnny Rogers, of course, going back to the Big Eight days in Nebraska, and Jack Mitchell, former Oklahoma great, and Welker. Tied with some pretty good company there. And looks like they got another first down here. Mike Leach has a nice, well-oiled machine, and DJ Simmons is, is just running it to perfection here, Bill. Interesting that he was telling us yesterday about Simmons that he said, you know, backups can either just kind of be along for the ride or get into it. He goes, this guy, he goes, I'm not surprised at his success because he said he picked it up, he learned while he was backing up Kingsbury, not just showing up. Yeah, and a few times he did get in the ball game a year ago. He, you know, he was productive then, and he's got the confidence out there. We saw it in him. We're seeing it in him tonight that uh, he runs his offense, and there's no problems, and he's got excellent communication skills. Got an update on the stats. There's a change. He's at 396 passing wise right now, so we stand corrected on that. He hands this one off to Johnny Mack, the Richard freshman from Lakeland, Florida. You thought there might have been a production drop off between Cliff Kingsbury and B.J. Simmons coming in this in this season this year, but really has been. It's really picked up, if anything. You know, he just bided his time. He's paid his dues, was three years here behind Cliff, and now he's just taking full ride with him. Mike Leach has to be ecstatic with his production. Last year, he threw for 329 yards, five touchdowns, and one interception. Second and two at the 45-yard line. Simmons and the whistle will bring a halt to the play with a flag's thrown. Prior to the snap, a false start on the offense. Five yards, we're still second down. Well, Simmons is known to have maybe a little bit stronger arm than Kingsbury, but we had a chance to check with Wes Welker, who certainly played a lot with Kingsbury, and what is the difference between Kingsbury and Simmons? It's a little bit different, but, um, you know, B.J. Simmons, he's been there just as long as Cliff has, so uh, he, he's real familiar with the offense and, and knows it inside and out. Um, so, you know, it, it's gone pretty smoothly, uh, a lot better than I, than I thought it would. And, and uh, you know, I'm just real excited about uh, having somebody else behind there, uh, you know, zing the ball around. Second and seven from midfield for Simmons, and it is complete. Right around the 40-yard line, flag thrown as Francis makes the reception. Jones, the defender. So many variables that a defense has to deal with with this type of offense. You have four wide receivers out there, a 
a tailback in the backfield who is actually more of a wide receiver type as well. And you put all those guys out into the pattern, Bill, it is tough for a defense. You have to run seven, eight Pass defensive eight backs eight out there. Defense. The penalties decline. The yardage is enough for a first down. You, know, you choose to rush three and you try to you know, get in, get in the backfield and pressure the quarterback with only three rushers. And really a quarterback who's capable of throwing the football like Simmons is, that's a that's too easy for him to make those throws. And this is a system where you know, if you do blitz him, he has hot reads and he's expected to go somewhere with the football. And he's executing it well tonight. Now he's over 400 officially, 406 yards. First and 10 at the 39 for Simmons. Dumps it off again. And Mack, great speed, 20, 15, and Mack pushed out of bounds. Johnny Mack stopped by Jonte Buell. Mack came in with 14 receptions for 95 yards and a touchdown. We saw him on kicks earlier. Well, you see him in the middle of the field on Tay Tay Thompson trying to catch him. Number 44 just does not have enough speed. You see Mack getting around the corner and almost gets another touchdown pass here from Wes from B.J. Simmons. Mack came in ninth in the nation in kick returns, 31.4 on kickoff returns, first in the Big 12, and he's showing us to do more tick kicks back. Holding on the offense. 10 yards, replay first down. Going to come back, and Simmons just go back to work. 4.15 to go third quarter, 45 to 14. He's like, well, we kind of want to work on that one anyway. That's yeah, a challenge. We got, you know, let's go first and 20 this time, see what we can do. Penalties, Tech, that is certainly something in a closer football game that can come back to haunt them. Those are mostly uh, unsportsmanlike penalty, yeah. unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And those, the unsportsmanlike are the ones that can be cleaned up immediately. And again, about the same play. This time he goes right back to Mack, and Mack is brought down by Johnny Jolly, and Tonight, you lost those yards. We'll give you a chance to get them back, Johnny. Yeah, this is a slip screen out of the backfield of Mack. Just got a couple of blockers out in front of him, and old Mack does a good job of getting in there. Take a look at the offensive line's going to release out there, and Mack gets in right behind him and knocks some guys out of the way, and old Mr. Mack does a nice job catching the football and running the ball. Simmons 30 and 41 for 421 yards and six touchdowns. And you see the average at 494. Looks like he'd be able to give that a bump. And M has shown no ability to slow him down tonight. Simmons wants a seventh touchdown pass. Out of bounds, Francis, the receiver. Caught the ball, but out of bounds. Yeah. He had three receivers at the near sideline. He had Francis one-on-one -on -one coverage out there and trying to get that seventh, seventh touchdown, as you said, Bill. Trying to go upstairs to him. Simmons, of course, backing up Kingsbury, who, if you haven't followed him, is with the New England Patriots, is on injury reserve. We're trying to hook up with him tonight, but let's see. What time is it now? Uh, East Coast approaching 1 o'clock. <laughs> so it's like, wait a minute, I got a ball game tomorrow, and he's still involved with the ball club, even though he's not on the active roster. So he'd love to do it, but hard to do the night before a ball game. See the audible here by Simmons at the line of scrimmage. Third and four from the 33. Change in the play, and it works. And it's complete inside the 20-yard line to Wes Welker. Senior out of Oklahoma City Heritage High School. Welker having a fantastic career here. Jones made the tackle on the play. Well, you see B.J. Simmons comes up the line of scrimmage, and he sees got Wes Welker's going to do what I call a read-out pattern here. Take a look. It's going to take the defender inside and read it back out to the sideline. Good job of working with leverage away from the defender, and Wes Welker gets a first down. That's something that B.J. Simmons is very comfortable doing, coming up the line of scrimmage, reading the defense, and taking what the defense gives him. Welker was huge in that win by Tech last year at A&M. Had the 88-yard punt return for a touchdown in the game. Got his all-purpose act together in there in the big win. Simmons will keep 10 and slides and wrapped down hard about the seven or eight yard line where Sean Weston makes the tackle, but he got the first down. Not a bad option for him to run the football. Hey, if they're covered, you gotta pull it down and do something with it. B.J. Simmons found a gaping hole there and he said, hey, I'm gonna run. You see the bunch pattern up top, the coverage out there by Texas A&M. One, two, three guys there and there's a safety over the top. You don't see him and B.J. Simmons takes off and does a little slide route here. He gets tagged pretty good. 
Weston with the stop. Sets up a first and goal at the eight yard line. Simmons. Oh. Across the middle, did he get in the end zone? Yes. Touchdown, Texas Tech! Sensational by Peters, and a seventh touchdown pass of the night for Simmons. Well, getting the record on a play like that, that's pretty special. You've got Peters who catches the ball in traffic, takes a tremendous hit, but still stays the course, gets over the end line for the score, and B.J. Simmons racking up a, another record, Bill. Yeah, puts him in company with a guy who's on the sideline on the other side tonight. Dustin Long with seven, and with, of course, Josh Fields from Oklahoma State. And 51-14, to 14, most points ever scored by Texas Tech against Texas A&M as well. Five receivers with touchdowns tonight. Well, you're going to see the strike here to Peters, and watch Peters turn the ball up, and he gets popped, and pow, right there. He stretches out. That's an excellent effort by Peters being able to Stretch out for the score. Peters just going to work to the inside, and the ball's delivered high. And Ross tried to knock the ball loose, but didn't do that. And it's a touchdown. Think he's ready to have fun, Bill? They are enjoying it. Well, you're an offensive player. How can you not enjoy this setup here? It is so difficult to prepare for. You know, it's, it's one of the extremes on the offensive side of the ball. Some teams, you know, they take the extreme, they're gonna run the option or the old wishbone type stuff and run the football. Mike Leach is taking it to the other extreme where we're gonna throw the ball. They'll throw it 90% of the time and run it very sparingly. But you know, when they execute, like you say, it is difficult to defend. They come at you with so many different angles. And we got a trigger man like B.J. Simmons who is hot and really working this offense. It can put up huge numbers. Too good hits the point after. 52 to 14. Texas Tech Simmons and crew are rolling. DJ Simmons at Texas Tech. 52 14 over Texas AM. Fumble on the kickoff return. Murphy picked it back up. Still stopped inside his own 20 at the 18 yard line. And that's where Texas AM will try to get it going here as the Red Raiders have blown this one wide open. 31-14 at the half, three touchdowns here in the third quarter to make it 52-14. to B.J. Simmons come in this football game. Bill had thrown 16 touchdown passes in the previous four games. He had the seven tonight, 23 touchdowns in his first five games of the season. That's a pretty good number. Reggie McNeil, first to 10 from the 19 for the Aggies. Farmer, good sprint up the middle. Let's go back down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill, real quick, answering some of the email tonight. A lot of emails concerning right this guy right here, B.J. Simmons. That's right, he's pumped up. Still tell me he's going to get 70, but Ryan Young out of Houston wants to know, how come Simmons doesn't get much Heisman Trophy talk? Well, Ryan, I think it's early right now. You're seeing what he's doing right now. Wait about halfway through the season, and all of a sudden, if he continues the way he's going right now, Heisman talk will pump up what do you guys think yeah I don't think there's any question uh, last year Mike Leach was drumming up the case of Cliff Kingsbury as a flag here stops a play and I think unfairly Gary too many people look at numbers in this offense and say well anybody can do it that is not the case not what they're producing no, you have to have the talent, the skill, and you've got to be able to read defenses and execute. Prior to the snap, a false start by the offense. Five yards, still first down. You know, I can remember uh, when Dennis Franchoni was at TCU and Ladanian Tomlinson, who we've now seen in the NFL prove what kind of back he is. They'd say, well, the guy carries the ball 40 times. Well, you try carrying the football 40 times, you know. And, and people sometimes do not give enough credit to the individuals and what they're accomplishing. First and 15 of the 25. Lewis on the carry, stopped around the 28. Well, Jim Zebeller, Ryan, I guess is his name, we're talking about the Heisman watch for, for BJ. We had him on our, our Heisman yeah. watch today, so we're giving him a little pop there. 
DJ putting up the numbers. If he continues to do that, there's no doubt that he's going to get some mentions. And, you know, the thing about Texas Tech and winning a Heisman Trophy Award, you know, I, you know, I think in college football, a lot of it goes down to winning football games. And, you know, the more wins that you have and the more numbers that you put up, people are going to come and notice it. And here we are in a national venue uh, showing his skills and showing the ability that, that he has here at Texas Tech. You know, just a first-year player, so not really a lot of guys are, know much about him because this is the first time that he has really been on the national scene. Second and 12, pass incomplete and the flag thrown. Yeah, I would agree 100% with that. And that's pretty much what Coach Leach, I'm sure, is, is telling him, is that, hey, this team does well. This team wins a Big 12 South or whatever. You'll get all the notice, all the awards that you want. Maybe on Stratton, we'll see 45 as holding call. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Take a look here at Stratton here, your middle linebacker. See what happens here. Got the tight end coming off the ball and trying to throw the ball. Yeah, he jams him downfield as the ball's in the air. That's what the official call. The back judge who's responsible looking right at the tight end. I call that every time. Just a young freshman out of high school doing a good job here. Actually, uh, Stratton you know, took a couple years yeah. off as a Mormon mission, you know, and doing a good job with that. Now Mark. he had two years. He put dedicated two years to that. Now he's playing a linebacker here, middle linebacker. And they're really excited about him, and they think that he's going to grow into a pretty good one. First and 10 at the 43-yard line following the penalty. McNeil felt the pressure, got out. Now having to keep it. Oh, my. Hammered as Texas Tech making the tackle was McGinnis. Nathan McGinnis. Wow. From Waco, 6'2, 204, 264, rather. Woo. And Reggie McNeil going to get his doctrine here. A big hit. <laughs> McGinnis all pumped up about that one. Dennis had a dislocated hip and finally coming back and getting a start, chance to play tonight. Wow. I guess he's healthy. Second and six of the 47, and Lewis diving for that first down marker. Courtney Lewis, the ball carrier. Actually, a footwork that Courtney Lewis has. And we talk about comparing him with other backs at Texas A&M history, like a Leland McElroy and company like that with really quick feet. And you see the spin moves here in the backfield. And that's why they think he's going to be pretty special for this football team. It's a pretty good company you're throwing that name about with. His, his tenure at Texas A&M, he was a Heisman hopeful himself. Yep. And they'll start weeding themselves out. You get into conference games as we are now around the country, and people know you a little bit better, and they've prepared for you over the years. It'll be interesting to see who blooms and who wilts. First to 10 at the 46. The pitch, Lewis. It's about the 45, maybe a yard. It was hard earned. Yeah, but Adele Duckett was really rude to uh, Reggie McNeil. Adele Duckett does a good job on the defensive end spot. He stopped Reggie McNeil from coming around the corner whatsoever and made him quick pitch it. Good job by the Tech defense of going able to slide out there. That wraps up the third quarter. It was all Texas Tech. Here in Lubbock in the third quarter, as the Red Raiders continue with Simmons putting on a touchdown passing parade. It's the end of the third, the score, 52-14 Texas Tech. You're watching College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, presented by Neil Sarah. Welcome back to Lubbock, Texas. Bill Land along with Gary Reasons, 52-14 as we enter the fourth quarter here. And the question tonight is just how much and whether or not AM can get things going offensively, Gary, as the Red Raiders throwing a shutout in that third quarter. Well, DJ Simmons and company doing a good job moving the football, not giving Texas AM a chance to move the football much. Every time they had the ball in their hands, they're executing and doing it to perfection. And Reggie McNeil, you know, he's got to find a way to make things work. They've got good field position now, have a chance to do something here if we start this fourth quarter. Third down and 10, the ball at the 46-yard line. McNeil in Red Raider territory. 
Lewis the lone back behind him. Murphy to the left, Taylor to the top of your screen. McNeil, watch Taylor. And late flag, but I think he grabbed him. I think it's a good call. Tim Norman was covering, and I think there was any doubt that he held him. But naturally, the objection, if there is one from the coaches, it's, well, you were there, why did you? Well, it's pass interference. The back judge, you know, he's the one who makes the call, but the, the field judge on the sideline chose not to throw a flag. Pass interference on the defense, 15 yards for the previous spot, and a first down. Take a look at the end of the play here. A little contact there. I, uh, I don't. I'm not sure what they're seeing there. Might have been something before that, but nonetheless, it's a first down here for uh, Texas A&M. Move the sticks a little bit. First and ten at the 31 now for the Aggies, following the penalty. <laughs> Lewis. Nice run by Lewis. That's the quick feed I'm talking about. Our Bank of America higher standards. Well, how about Simmons? The third quarter, three touchdown passes to give him a big 12 record time seven. And he shows the touch there to Torian Henderson and then the little speed play here to the level getting his third touchdown reception of the night. And then the strike to Peters, the big pop, but still the stretch out for the touchdown. And BJ Simmons, seven touchdown passes. He is definitely a higher standard. You see David Klingler. The NCAA record with 11. The guy's not the run set in the uh, 25 seconds. Second down and one at the 22. Van Zant wide right. Riley and Taylor come left. And Joseph carries the football. Down inside the 11 yard line. <laughs> First and 10 for the Aggies. It doesn't get easier for Texas A&M. They'll go home against Baylor. And you go, oh yeah, Baylor, yeah, Baylor. That blistered Colorado today. And uh, boy, what a day for Guy Morris in his Big 12 opener with the Bears. And that school needed some good news. They got it today with a huge win against Colorado. Keeping the football around the left end and into the end zone, Lewis with a touchdown. Well, Reggie McNeil running the option play to perfection here, waits at the very last second to pitch the ball to Courtney Lewis. And Courtney shows why we were talking so highly about him. He's got enough speed around the corner and gets a touchdown here as we start the fourth quarter. You see here it's a reverse out and down the line option. He's going to take the pitch out there. Courtney Lewis does. And Good speed, good execution inside. Just walks a tightrope down the sideline. Pretty easy score for him. Courtney Lewis gets his second touchdown of the night, his seventh of the year on a 16-yard scamper on the option play. And gone, gone! And the kick is up and good as Pegram makes it a 52 to 21 ball game. We'll be right back with more. Now that's Welcome back, 52-21 College Football Saturday, brought to you by Kiyosera. Our FoxSports.com poll tonight, who's the best wide receiver named Williams? Well, 51% of you say Roy Williams from University of Texas. Second, Mike Williams from USC at 23%. And then Reggie from Washington. I think a few Longhorn fans might be watching this ball game. I'll tell you what, they got a big one today where they come from behind win against Kansas State. And 24-20, Kansas State next week against Oklahoma State in Stillwater. The Fox Sports Net game, 11.30 in the morning, will be there, Gary. That'll be interesting. Our Campbell's Chunky Soup game summary graphic gives you the big reason why Tech has this huge lead. Simmons, Big 12 record tying seven TD passes. He has spread it around. McNeil on almost unnoticed 264 total yards. Yeah, he's been productive out there for Texas A&M, no doubt about that. Now you got B.J. back out there running this offense, and they're not through yet, Bill. Simmons, 13-20 to go in the ball game. 
And as he revs it up here in the fourth quarter with 445 yards, 32 of 44 for seven scores, they'll run it. They'll get it out of bounds to stop the clock. And let's go down to Jim Knox. Okay, thanks, Bill. Kelly Sklar outside of Philadelphia wanted to know about the big offensive lineman of Texas A&M, Alan Ruber. How big is he? Six foot six, 310 pounds. They said at the age of two, he ate 13 pancakes. Followed him around last night, and this was the le all was left of his <laughs> big piece of beef that he had. Just a little bone here, guys. Alan Ruber, six foot six, 310 pounds. He says his favorite meal is anything that deals with beef. Well, watch out. Good thing you're way down there. Gary grabbed that thing from you. <laughs> He's looking for groceries himself now that we're hit well past midnight. Yeah, it starts another day. It's almost breakfast, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Always a good time to have a meal. This is, well, this is October 5th now, right? We did a game on the 4th. Now we're doing a game on the 5th. Is that how it works? Double duty. Huh? Double duty. Hey, well, great. Double header. Send in a couple invoices on this one. What do you think? <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer to that one. A little talking. contact out there at the wide receiver spot. There was some contact on the far sideline. The line judge going to be a penalty, maybe a false start or a defensive encroachment. One of the two. You know, a lot of people, not a lot of people have left this game to a point. Now, last year, it was Tech with a big come from behind. Oh, yeah. A little bit different deal. They've got the offense to do that. Texas A&M has built an entirely different look, and it's a much more difficult chore for them to come back in the situation. And of course, Tech right wasn't down this off five on the defense. Five yards and replay second down. That, that's what Dennis French is talking about as far as a shootout. They're not capable of that in this football game. You see up here at the top of the field, you're going to see right there, you're going to see the contact. It's going to be a defense steps across and taps the receiver, and that's the Defensive uh, offside. Against Byron Jones, junior from Bay City, Texas. Came in with a team winning seven pass breakup. First and ten, the ball on the 30 now for Texas Tech. E.J. Simmons scrambling around, finds a man, and it is Francis. Francis, 30. And then tackled from behind down near the 26-yard line. Carlos Francis out of Fort Worth. Well, B.J. Simmons just kind of took a little stroll out of the pocket that time out to the right side. Nobody out there to contest him on that throw, and Carlos does a good job of hauling one in. You're going to take a look here, and B.J.'s just going to work out to his right. Nobody out there. Look at all the room that he has to survey the defense and the coverage. Finds Carlos Francis down there, and he let him out there a little bit. He might have had a good long run that time, perhaps another score. Dangerous here. You got a lot of receivers that can move, and this quarterback is doing a good job of finding them. First and 10 of the 26, Francis. Six receptions for now 110 yards. Henderson broke a tackle to 20. They're trying to strip the ball from him. He manages to hang on to it. And takes it down to the, well, the 15. We'll see where they place the football. It's Texas Tech, eight shy of the 60 mark. Plenty of time left here. Today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. Well, we're waiting, ticking with 52-21. Texas Tech knocking on the door again. First and 10 at the 16-yard line. Trips to the left. Welker. Simmons got him in. Yes, touchdown, Welker. Another one. And now Simmons is the Big 12 record holder by himself with eight touchdown passes in one ball game. I don't think there's any doubt that those gentlemen know just what happened on the field, setting the record. A lot of congratulations to B.J. Simmons from the linemen to the receivers. Take a look here at Welker. He's in the slot right up the middle of the field, and B.J. just delivers it perfectly right over the top and really an uncontested throw and catch. Welker had a 48-yard reception earlier for a touchdown. So West comes up with his third TD on the receiving end this year. Had one on a punt return also this season. And 
Texas Tech. The point after makes it 59-21. Simmons, a new record, eight touchdown passes. Fifty nine twenty one Simmons a record setting eighth touchdown pass this one to Welker college football presented by Kira Sarah returns to Fox Sports Net next week with a doubleheader first UCLA meets Arizona in a Pac-10 showdown then the Stanford Cardinal try to pull off the upset they take on 10th ranked USC college football next week 6 p.m. Eastern 3 p.m. Pacific right here on Fox Sports Net check local listings at foxsports.com for the start time in your area. UCLA riddled Washington earlier today on Fox Sports Net. Kick off to Texas A&M. And Murphy leads to get back to the 20-yard line. And that's where the Aggies will start. Another look at the 8th TD pass from Simmons. Now, Big 12 record touchdown pass here, B.J. Simmons. You got Welker just going to work to the middle of the field here, B.J. Simmons. No problem delivering this football. Welker, you see no one is there. Missed coverage, missed assignment, obviously, and that's what you do. You just execute like that. You know you got the record. Little smile there on BJ's face, no doubt about it. <laughs> Last three games, 1,804 passing yards and 16 touchdowns. I can do that math. That's 601 yards a game. Wow, that's pretty good. Better than pretty good. <laughs> yeah, what's good? Your book. Oh, <laughs> That's pretty good. Unbelievable is what it is. Uh, and nothing against David Klingler. He did it against Eastern Washington. But DJ Simmons is, you know, you're talking about Texas A&M football team that is known for defense. This ball club may not be, but this is still not a bad football team. At least I don't believe it. Now, this Aggie defense, they've had, they've had some pride. Now, I tell you, they've been in the top five defense, 1991 to 95, and in 91, they were number one in total defense. They're not that wrecking crew of old, that's for sure. And Carl Torbush, their defense coordinator, told us such. And so they've got a young defense, and they've got a lot of growing up to do. Some of the other big games are these huge games, Ole Miss and, of course, NC State. And the kick. Murphy. And brought down across the 30. And let's go down to Jim Knox now. All right, Bill, real quick. Sonny Cumbie right now warming up. B.J. Simmons is through for the game. Sonny Cumbie, the backup, will be in. And how about Wes Welker? You know, we, we watched him in practice yesterday during a walkthrough. He's playing this game with a turf toe. He was in a boot yesterday. And they said that when he's not playing football, he wears the boot to stabilize that turf toe. He's in a lot of pain, but he's still kicking. No problem for Welker. Two touchdowns on the night. Texas A&M had scored 50 points at one time in this series against Tech. So Tech's beaten that record. Well, Lewis rips off a nice run here with 11.25 to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and Dustin Long steps in the huddle this time for the Aggies. Hand off to Courtney Lewis. And we talked about Dustin Long and his uh, exploits a year ago. Maybe his numbers on the year so far. Dustin, very capable player. And there is a history with Dennis Franchoni in playing two quarterbacks and being very successful with it. And he has maintained that uh, he'll go with the guy that has the hot hand. And if it needs to be alternate, he'll do that. He did tell us that McNeil had a bit of a bruised thigh. If he was able to go tonight, he was his man. Well, now Long comes in to get an opportunity. First attempt from the 49, and what? he's trying to dump it off. Runs all the way back across to the other side of the field. And incomplete. Intended for Taylor. Dustin Long. Last year. In this game. Count them. Seven touchdown passes. Now you see Bethel Johnson running with the football there. And Greg Porter get into the action. Some guys that are not, not here with these Aggies this year. And Jamar Murphy. Taylor. Murphy, I mean. And then you got Jamar Taylor getting the action as well. And, Spread the ball around. This young man had a great great afternoon against uh, Texas Tech a year ago, and I'm sure he'd have liked to have been in this contest perhaps a little bit earlier than here late in the fourth quarter. Stacy Jones scoops this one up for the score, and then three yards to Terrence Thomas. This was in overtime. He ended up with 367 and seven touchdowns and set the Big 12 record that was tied by Josh Fields earlier this year and broken by 
Simmons tonight. Geelong with first and 10. The ball at the 39 yard line. Lewis. Pounds it about the 37. You know, we'll give you that stat with Simmons in his passing yards the last three games. That would rank ninth all time in season passing yardage at Texas Tech. <laughs> what he's done in the last three weeks, 1,804 yards, would put him number nine for a season. Wow, that's moving up the charts pretty <laughs> quick. And you can talk about, well, yeah, it's a different era and everything else, but we're talking three games. Now, this is an offense that is based on production. That's Mike Leach's theory. Just go out there and produce, and they've certainly done that this evening. Riley on the reception, and he may break it. He does. Touchdown, Aggies. Riley on a 37-yard TD pass from Dustin Long. So Long brings the Aggies back. Well, the coverage slipped down. That may have been session and coverage on Riley. And Justin Long does a good job on the play action here, just throwing the ball outside, and Riley takes it. Watch the defender slip down here. Can't make the play. And good job by Riley, just taking it north and south and get the touchdown. Justin Long with the TD pass, his second of the year. The point after for Pegram. And it is good. So Texas A&M, a couple of scores here in the fourth quarter, 59-28, 10.03 to go. Come back. We'll see. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Kyocera, the new value frontier, by Dr. Pepper, BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. By Microsoft, your potential, our passion. By Lincoln, there are those who travel and those who travel well. And today's first down line is brought to you by Net Zero High Speed Internet. Surf the web up to five times faster. <laughs> well, does Texas Tech want more? Well, they hit that start me up tune <laughs> as, as we approach show 1230 on Sunday morning. And with 10.03 to go, go after an Aggie score, just Tech saying, well, that's the signal that they're not done. We shouldn't be done. Let's check out the Big 12 scoring action from today as actually Saturday's games. <laughs> so yeah. We take a look back. And the big one, of course, uh, upset Baylor. First win uh, for Coach Guy Morris. Nebraska blanks Troy State. Texas come from behind over Kansas State in a battle of ranked teams. OSU continues to roll over Ulala. And Oklahoma, the number one ranked team in the country, Talk about Jason White, a guy who's been on a roll for them. They hammer Iowa State up in Ames. Well, here's a new quarterback, Cumby, as he comes on to replace the record-setting Simmons. And guess what? He can throw two, and he does to Haverty. Trey Haverty on the reception, his first of the night. Sonny Cumby, a junior from Snyder, Texas, out in the western part of the state here. 6'4", 210 pound, or a good-sized quarterback. the chance to, to rev up this high-powered machine. Last year, that's played two games, five of six for 34 yards. And it's a point in time here tonight. And he drills it. As Falani with the reception, Joel Falani, it's his first reception. Look at Cumby. Mike Leach, nothing but good things to say about him. He said, hey, he's another guy that bide his time, doing the work. Good player, very similar to Simmons. Mack on the carry. Arkeo Serra beat a player of the game. Well, play of the game. Take your pick. It probably involves the same guy. And the record setting. Eighth touchdown pass from Simmons. This one to Welker. Welker second. The Kiyosara meet a play of the day. And B.J. Simmons 
New Big 12 record holder with eight touchdown passes in one game. Well, he spread it around. He shares a record with some of those guys. He got several guys he threw the ball yeah. to, touchdowns wise. They're all a part of it. Second and five at the 40 for Cumbie. Dumps it off to Mack. Mack across the 50. Oh, this kid's exciting. Richard freshman, Lakeland, Florida. Played on a 5A state team championship team in his high school days down there in the Sunshine State. Came via City College of San Francisco where he had 24 touchdowns. Ran for 1,500 yards there. Redshirted last year. I think he could come out of the backfield or he could be one of the wide receivers, maybe a slot. 5'7", 180 pounder. As you said, Bill, explosive, got good speed, and I think they're going to they're gonna like him here. Texas Tech Red Raiders scoring note 59 tonight. Well, the most since 1950. It's 63. And Milani again. Let's go down to Jim Knox once more. Okay, Bill, found what to do with this big old bone. You know, Reveille 7 will turn three years old next Thursday. We're going to award her with the bone. She's just sniffing it right now, but guys. <laughs> late, late night stack for Reveille, okay? There you go. And Reveille's six happy birthday from a couple weeks ago. Give her our best, would you? Boy. Let her share. <laughs> Let's say, please, don't tease Reveille. <laughs> One of the most respected animals in all oh, of Texas yeah. right there. I'll tell you. Humby back to the passing roars as he completes it down to the... 36 yard line as Haverty comes up with the reception. Jonte Buell making the tackle. And Cumbie's four or five on this drive, so didn't have a different jersey. You'd say, well, boy, Simmons just keeps on pouring it on. First and 10 at the 36. Cumbie, a little taller. Incomplete, looking for Falani. Last year, Mike Leach in his third year got nine wins. Can they match that or better it this year? How about it? Ah, yeah, I'm not going to rule anything out, you know, and uh, given the fact that every game I've ever coached, I thought we were going to win. I guess, you know, uh, I'm a bad person to ask because I don't have any perspective at all. But, uh, you know, uh, there isn't anybody on our schedule that we can't beat if we play well. That's confidence. Yeah, and I think anybody watching tonight or seeing throughout this season would certainly believe that. Second and ten at the 36. Mack brought down inside the 20. Let's take a look at their schedule, and you make the call as to how many W's you think this Tech team is capable. they got Iowa State next week, then a pair of road games at OSU and Missouri, Colorado here, at Baylor, and then they finish up in Austin against the Longhorns and then against Oklahoma. The Sooners have come calling here to end the regular season. I could see them running a long way with this a football chop block team. on the offense. Penalty is 15 yards and replay second down. Certainly be competitive in, in those games. And then you get down to Texas and Oklahoma. Those might be the, the telltale of how well this uh, or how far this Texas Tech football team could go. You know, one thing we haven't really talked a lot about, that offensive line, I think they've done an exceptional job tonight. And, and uh, the size that they have, that offensive line, and how well they've groomed. This is the best offensive line that Mike Leach has had since he's been here. And these guys have all grown up in the system, and they know how to, they know how to execute it. And that's something that you have to have as well as the receiver and the quarterback. Yeah, his recruiting classes, you make what you want of ratings, but they've been rated higher each year that he's been here. And he's getting better football players. Mack on the reception right at midfield. Let's go back down to Jim Knox with more on Wes Welker. As you see, Wes Welker in good spirits, but we're talking about that turf toe guy right now. He's icing it down. One tough guy to play with a turf toe. Two touchdowns. He was all over the field tonight. Boy, another great performance from the versatile Wes Welker. Jim was talking about the boot that he wears. You know, it's kind of like a ski boot, but it's got a real fixed hard bottom on it. It doesn't allow him to bend his toes anyway. An inflammation in the joint, that's what turf toe is, and it's very, very painful for Russ Welker, a real gamer. He's able to, to handle that pain and obviously perform very well. Humby on third and 23. 
may have gotten it. No, a little, a little short. Fuller, Cody Fuller was the receiver. And you know the crowd, go for it. Well, that's nothing new to Mike Leach. He's gone for it, I think, nine or ten times already this season on fourth down and fourth down and two here late in this ball game. That's not a real critical call. There's six to 12 fourth down situations. And <laughs> after the NC State loss where they had 681 yards of total offense at 21 points, he bashed himself. He said, have you ever seen anybody coach a team for that many yards and that few points? Well, they made up for it last week with the win at Ole Miss, 49-45, and tonight they've exploded for 59 against Texas A&M. Incomplete on the fourth and three, and A&M will get the ball back, and the Aggies, we mentioned, they home to meet Baylor, and that'll be a charged-up Bear Ball Club tomorrow, and the Aggies, danger of losing their third in a row here. Nebraska then on the road, Oklahoma State, Kansas, so they've still got number 12 Nebraska, number one Oklahoma, and number 13 Texas all on the road. Yeah, those are going to be tough ball games for Dennis Franchione and trying to get things going right. And take a look at the, the ranking here, the second toughest remaining schedule in the nation. So that's what the Aggies have in front of them. First to 10 from the 29. Justin Long took down pass last time, just overthrowing Joseph on this play. 450 remaining in the football game. A little late, partner. How are you holding up? Well, it's been fun tonight. It's been fun. We, of course, wish for close ball games <laughs> and just exciting down to the end finishes. Uh, doesn't appear that we're going to get that here this evening, but the performance of Texas Tech is just nothing short of sensational. And you just have to marvel at what they go at. And that is one thing we do travel around the league. There isn't anybody that doesn't just tip their cap to Mike Leach in his offensive scheme and what he does. And uh, and it is sincere in their um, compliments of the way they run the show here. You know, when you talk to Mike Leach and you ask him about, you know, about his offense and what he thinks and those kind of things, and you ask him, you know, the questions like, are you surprised that this is going on? Or, or do, you, do you think that these things are, 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 are out of line? Or, or, and he gives you these answers that are, that are pretty much, you know, he's got such confidence in what they do that you think, is, is he for real? You know, and and he gives you those uh, those answers and like, yeah, he's he's for real with this. He really thinks that this is what he he wants to do and that they can accomplish. And very very confident. He's got these players believing that also. Schroeder's reception, his first of the night, gives Ags first and ten at the 48, and that one just incomplete. Looking again for Matakis, Andy Matakis, the freshman out of Corpus Christi. <laughs> Justin Long trying to thread one in here in the middle of the field to Matakis. Pretty close. Six to 40. And it'll be second and 10 from the 48 yard line now of Texas A&M. Ruben Taylor sets up inside. Schroeder, the man in motion for the Aggies. Long hands it off. And carry to the 37 yard line for Texas A&M as they get into tech territory here as Fleming, Fleming makes the carry, Oscar Fleming. Kind of Denton Ryan High School or north of Dallas. One of the senior running backs here for this A&M bunch. First down, first and 10 at the 37. Schroeder in motion, Fleming the call again. And brought down on the play by 96, that is Dawson. You know, Bill, we got to see something really pretty rare this morning. Actually, kind of not too rare out here in West Texas. Was it, was it you know, our producer, Bob Steinfeld, was telling us about the 16th hole, the, the jackalope reared its head? Well, wow. we saw the jackalopes out today at the Rawls course, <laughs> the new Texas Tech golf course that they were so nice to treat us to. It's a great thing about 9 p.m. kickoffs. You can get a round of golf in, and we did hurry around there. <laughs> Boy, it was, uh, it was fun, and we sure appreciate uh, the opportunity. What a great layout that is. Schroeder on the reception inside the 20, down to the 15. As Smith and Acock were in on the stop for 
Texas Tech. <laughs> offense tonight, yeah. Texas A&M, 483 yards of offense. Tech, 625. That's a lot of production by A&M, but Texas Tech just that much better. And it's a first and 10 at the 15. Long, that ball slipped. Or he's just throwing away and a flag, I think, down there. We'll see. Our Dr. Pepper player of the game. You got it, DJ Simmons. Glover got the first two and ended up with three. And no doubt about it, this young man had a good night. Wes Welker got in the act. And then Ricks with the Hicks with the nice catch. Torian Henderson. Another one for Glover, his third. So yeah, that was, might have been the most. Yeah, Mr. Peters getting that big shot. And then Wes Welker with the, the number eight. Well, Simmons said they're going to get 70. It doesn't appear that that's going to happen, but <laughs> not that they didn't give it a pretty good whirl. Holding on the offense, that penalty is declined. Pass interference on the offense is 15 yards from the previous spot and replay first down. Two thirty nine remaining here with it first and twenty five, the ball on the thirty. Long. Complete to Taylor as Irvin Taylor, the freshman from Mission, Texas. Well, not many folks have left this stadium yet, Bill. It's a lot of, a lot of Red Raider faithful here. Still hanging out to see the end of this game. <laughs> you know, I think they kind of remember last year's game. Never know what's going to happen until the end of this game, but looks like Texas Tech has this game pretty well in hand. Red Raider fans just sitting back and able to enjoy tonight that it wasn't a close game. So many of them have been recently. Long. Incomplete. Tended for Schroeder again in the end zone. You see Dustin Long's arm. He's got a very capable arm. He throws a nice touch pass on the play action, deep balls, and then that one zips it outside. Didn't get enough opportunities tonight for him. I'm sure that he'd be happy to have been out there a lot earlier, but uh, he says he's going to do whatever it takes for this team to win, whether it's a, a two quarterback rotation. He's going to take his role. He's not a selfish guy. and. He understands that he just wants to win football games at Texas A&M. Well, he threw for 2,509 yards last year, 19 touchdowns. Junior out of Port Nature's Grove High School. Led them to a state title. Completes the pass here to Joseph. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 1.45 to go. 59-28 as Texas Tech well, you mentioned, Gary, to the keys of the game, quick start. They did it when they jumped out 17-0 and they scored in their first two possessions. And then 31-14 at the half and then shut them out in the third quarter and led to 52-14 coming into the fourth. You know, one of the things that Tech did not do is they did not turn the ball over. You know, they didn't have the miscues that, uh, that they did a week ago that caused them a chance to, to lose the game. And, Here's Long scrambling back at this 33 or the 33 of Tech and gets out of bounds. Dawson had kept the pressure on him. And ball security is something that's important for, for any football team. And, and you don't give it up. You stand a chance to at least stay competitive in the football game. And Long heads off here. Texas Tech fans join it, and again, as we, well, we got about quarter to one <laughs> Sunday morning. It's well, and they're all standing up. Service too. starts yeah. at early service pretty soon. <laughs> you know, there's no reason to hurry. 
You were going to go to sleep early. You were coming to this game tonight anyway. <laughs> go ahead and enjoy the victory. And the Aggie fans that have come here have been their loyal selves yeah. as well. Passes complete on the play to Johnny Mack for Texas Tech. Let's take a look at the Big 12 South standings here and assume that Texas Tech is going to hang on for this minute 19. And you see Oklahoma with the win over Iowa State today. Texas beating Kansas State. Baylor knocks off Colorado and Tech. They're all 4 1 0. Then AM, Oklahoma State lost. Remember the season opener. That was back in August up at Nebraska. And they have since won all their non-conference games, beating you La La today, Louisiana Lafayette. They meet K-State next week. And the completion here for Texas Tech. And everybody getting in on the act as Taylor Job is the receiver there, his first reception. Big 12 North, Nebraska with that win over Oklahoma State, to the one and OKU, Missouri, uh, their victim last week. And the Tigers 0-1 along with K-State, Colorado, and of course, Iowa State. Really surprising to see Colorado losing that ball game today to Baylor, but that's a, a huge win for Guy Morris and his bunch. And Gary Barnett obviously not pleased with that effort uh, that his team put out there on the field today. And that incredible non-conference schedule probably adding up to hurt him here. Here, Texas Tech with a shovel pass, and this time they may score again with 38 seconds to go. Lololiki Bangawanga with the reception. Yeah, it took me a while to get the phonetics down. Bangawanga from Cumbie, and Cumbie may pass the 100-yard mark. Lock moving. First and 10 at the 29. And Cumbie. Going for the touchdown, and it's incomplete intended for Hicks. Covered by Weston on the play. Well, there's no quit this Texas Tech match. They'd like to put up another score. They look outside, you see Hicks outside on the coverage, and the ball's thrown up. Little contact there, Weston. Well, Texas Tech came in averaging 42 and a half. They give that average a little bump here tonight. First and 10. Or second attempt for the 29. And Bonga Wonga got crossed up on the little pitch there. Incomplete. It stops the clock with eight seconds, so they'll get another shot. Bonga Wonga is from Brussels, Belgium. Two and five pounds junior. I think a senior. And Eight seconds to go, second and uh, third ten, I should say. Wonga Wonga lines up next to Cumby. And he hands it off to him. And that should be the ball game. And Texas Tech goes to 4-1. Wins its Big 12 opener with a convincing 59-28 victory. Congratulations to Mike Leach from Dennis Franchoni. Let's go down to Jim Knox with the record setter. All right, here he is, the record setter. Did you know you set a Big 12 record, eight touchdowns? Uh, honestly, I was into the game. I didn't know it until after the fact, but, uh, you know, what can I say? I said all along we got the best group of receivers in the country, and I think they proved it tonight, and the offensive line did a great job, so I couldn't have done it without my teammates. DJ, seems like a big key for you guys on offense is the way you spread the ball around. Everybody seems to be catching footballs. Eight different receivers tonight, five different receivers scored. Definitely, I mean, those guys are playmakers. I said it all along. If I get it to anybody's hands, they're gonna make plays, and that's what they did tonight. As far as this team, you came out and you struck quickly. Do you think when you struck quickly, got up 16, 17 points, all of a sudden you could see it on the other side of the line, the intensity went down on the Aggies defense? Yeah, I mean, it looked like, you know, they were just frustrated. They couldn't really do anything to match everything that we were doing. So, like I said, I just give all, uh, everything to my teammates, man. They played a great job, and, uh, you know, fortunately it came out in our favor. Okay, it's close to 1 a.m. in the morning here in Lubbock. You guys going to celebrate a little tonight? 
I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what time we get out of here. I don't know. Okay. Congratulations, <laughs> BJ. Bill. Yeah, not much time. Come back and look at the film for tomorrow. <laughs> Well, Gary, very impressive win. What more can we say? We've said it all tonight. Well, B.J. Simmons had a tremendous evening. I tell you, this offense for Texas Tech is one that's going to be reckoned with here in this conference, and you know, Mike Leach has his way. They're going to be competitive throughout this entire conference race. Ags dropped their third in a row. First attempt provided by PVI Virtual Media Services, LLC. Now, this is Bill Land for Gary Reasons and Jim Knox saying so long from Lubbock, Texas, where Texas Tech wins over Texas A&M 59 to 28.